Hello and welcome to the Nin Show Podcast, the only podcast where the 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 only podcast where me, the host Craftsworth, is going to loudly interrupt our my co-host Math Wiz as soon as he says something. Hello, I have words to say, and I Shit, wasn't interrupted. I missed my timing. <laughs> I'm a failure. Um, Craftsworth right, is let's... a liar. <laughs> More like a rogue dwarf. No, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make that joke. Um. Anyway, so let's get into it, shall we? Or no, uh, well, firstly, you might notice that this episode is a bit early. That's because scheduling conflicts, we had to record it, it was either recorded earlier or recorded later. We decided earlier. And then the reason it's going up earlier is because, like, I felt like, well, if you wanted to call in on last episode, yeah, we could have waited and uploaded it later, but then you might have posted your comment and then been disappointed that it didn't get in. Maybe, if, I don't know who, how attached people to, are to that, because we... We only go through, like, a fraction of the comments, unfortunately, because, well, that's on them. But, um, and if you haven't watched the last, or listened to the last episode yet, then, yeah, here it, oh, here you go. Uh, have more to your, uh, podcast, uh, backlog. All right, getting into comments. Uh, Austin Case pointed out that, yes, what is, in fact, Ke- Kekai Genkai, as we found out in this stretch of chapters, which is a trend lately, where something gets brought up, kind of, sort of, and then I'm like, well, why did that get brought up, kind of, sort of, and then... The, like, literally the next arc, it gets, um, answered. But, um, in the comments of, or responses to that comment, someone mentioned, uh, Yin Yang release, which is something I really don't know about because that was p- part of the, that was stuff that happened after I stopped reading the manga. So I don't really know what that is. But the fact that it exists and just reminding, remembering that and then, like, like, <sighs> I guess we'll talk about it later, but just, uh, Ninjutsu, I feel like there's a lot of parts to it that should have been established way earlier, but weren't, I guess. Or maybe not, like, not everything, but it's like, like, what the fuck is Yin Yang, Yang really seeming supposed to be? I don't understand. Do you even remember MathWiz, or? Uh, I don't. I don't even remember what this is that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, okay, yeah, so, <laughs> never mind then. I guess we'll, we'll I'll complain about it. I mean, is it, too, <laughs> is it too much to ask for every battle system to be as, like, elegant and interesting as Nen from Hunter x Hunter? Like, maybe, but <laughs> Nen is uh, good, so it's just, like, Chakra, compared to that, like, Chakra is like, like, the one thing that's always bugged me about, uh, the Nen, or the Chakra system, and it also extends to other series like Fairy Tale, where every character could, in theory, learn any, you know, spell or jutsu that they want, that they could, but they always stick to, like, one type, which is, like, why limit yourselves? Why? Like, I mean, like, oh, actually, damn it, maybe I should have saved this comment for later, because, like, Kakashi does the Rasengan, and it's like, well, why haven't you used this before, Kakashi? Like, are there situations where the Rasengan would be more useful than the Chidori? Like, but Naruto just uses, like, the Rasengan for, like, 500 chapters, so it's like, okay. Like, I get it why. Like, it would be weird if a character had just so many weird powers, or if they could do, in theory, anything, and then it would be cheap. But then it's like, if you're not going to do that, then why design a system where that's possible? I guess it's my issue. Yeah, I, d- I did think that was... Well, I mean, I, we can talk more about Kakashi's Rasengan when we get there. Okay. Oh, that's part specifically? Not the general idea of the powers? And well, Like, I don't know, did you ever have that problem with Naruto and the chakra jutsu system? I mean, like with Naruto, it's... I, I don't have, like, a huge problem with it, because I, I feel as though... I don't know, when I try to compare this, like, really, beyond Hunter x Hunter, the only major power system I can think of is, uh, Key in Dragon Ball, but mm. I'd almost argue that that is less defined, well, I don't know, because... Well, with Key in Dragon Ball, it's more, that's more of a, like, everyone has like the same sort of base power, and then they sort of, like... And then they train it, basically. Yeah, or, well, they, they sometimes, they get different... Uh, like power, like uh, you know, there's uh the Donanpa, which is uh, like a scorching fire beam, you know, and then um, or at least it's supposed to be hotter. It, it's described as being hot when when other beam attacks aren't, I guess. And then there's like solar flare and de- destructive disc. So they get these different qualities, but other, but these are like like almost like descriptors to just the basic key attack that everyone has. Like they all, every, in a way, everyone has the exact same power. So that's a little different from something like the chakra system where everyone has these unique abilities, but that the, the, most of them, like you have, do have the Kekai Genkais, but, and stuff like that, but those are exceptions, not the rules. So I don't know. It's just like, a, a, you know, a good series would make limits and then like 
challenge them, I would say, like take the setting to a logical conclusion and well, which is actually uh, something I might get to comment on later, but it's not, not, I wouldn't say it really happens with the chakra system. So, you know, I mean, maybe that's also a symptom or no, a symptom or a cause of the fights not being that great all the time. Like there have been some good fights, but, uh, you know, as I said back in the Sasuke retrieval arc, it hasn't exactly been the norms. So anyway, um, Next comment, um, Yara asks, oh yeah, OPs and EDs, um, cause I, uh, start every episode with, uh, with an opening theme from the whatever arc that the chapters are, or the, the chapters we covered were from, so, and I personally, like, I never watched the anime, like, I watched it back, the dub, back when it was new, I watched a few episodes here and there, and I was like, okay, yeah, sure, but, um, I don't, so, like, the only OP I remember really, like, uh, Haruka Kanata, I think, which is, like, number two, I think, um, cause I, I think I heard that one out of context somewhere, and I remember liking it, so I ended up listening to it a few times, and so that one is in my brain, but other than that, I don't, I do, like, I don't dislike, like, a few of the OPs I've watched while getting for the footage, I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's, this is cool, a cool OP, I wouldn't mind hearing this every episode for, like, a hundred episodes or so, <laughs> um, or fit, maybe not that many, but, um, so, uh, but I was curious about you, because you have actually watched the anime. Uh, I'm sorry, so what was the original question again? Oh, sorry, how do you feel about the OPs and EDs? Um, of from the openings and endings, sorry. Uh, I mean, like, for me, it's most, I mean, I guess this would be the case for, I mean, not necessarily most OPs, but, uh, like, the Nar- I don't think the Naruto anime, like, typically has super inventive openings as far as like the animations go it's fairly standard shonen fair for the majority of 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 character introductions and whatnot (laughs) but like the songs it it varies there are some really good ones in there that or when i say really good like to me subjectively like i i always remember the the second one the the whatever the song title by asian kung fu generation that one's always good uh i think that was haruka kanata (laughs) <laughs> oh, probably was. But the uh, the one that I thought that you were going to use for the... When we did Sasuke Retrieval, I thought you were going to use the one... Uh, the other one that I remember, um, but you used the one that kind of comes in at that... Like, at the end bit of that arc, where it is more so, like, the fallout of the Retrieval, and okay. it goes into, like, the filler hell. Oh, um, oh. I don't remember okay. the name See, of it. I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> but, yeah, there's... But, uh, go on. Yeah, because, um, I don't know, that OP is also really good. I don't remember... The name of the song or the band or anything, but uh, I guess those two. Okay, would so there are probably a few that you like. Favorite, but you're not the type of subhuman that skips OPs, right? Well, the thing about Naruto when I watched <laughs> that was that because, um, like I said, most of what I, like for the majority of what I watched, I just found it through YouTube clips, and either ah. the OP EDs were cut out. Or I would just skip past them because I was in that binge state, so I would just fly gotcha. through it. So yeah, that's the thing about binging shows is that like when you're stuck with the same opening for like 50 episodes, you know, like I could actually I can forgive you at least watch it once. Like even if you're the type of person to not watch well, them, I mean, like, and then Jeff- there's of course the idea of like what if you miss something? Like I feel like I heard this recently. Maybe it was on hallway chat, so I might just be repeating something. But it's like oh no no it wasn't hallway chats, but it's like. If the opening changes to signify something that happened in the story, oh, that was where I hear, heard it from recently. I think um, Gurren Lagann, because uh, um, uh, yep. <laughs> has everyone been spoiled on Gurren Lagann? <laughs> Can I say Kamina dies and are people going to react? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh no! But it's like yeah, yeah, he dies in episode eight, and in episode nine, he's not in the opening theme, and. So that's, that can be emotional. Like, when you realize, like, oh shit, he really is gone. You know, that's a, that, that's a thing that can happen. I think it happened with Ben Saint, is what I'm remembering, um, of the PCP. So it's like, yeah, that, that, that's, this is, like, I personally, how I handle the OPs is I just, like, sometimes I, like, let it play and I'll go, like, check Twitter or something while I wait for the episode to start. But I usually won't skip them unless I actually hate the song, which is rare. Um, so, I don't know. But, um, again, with the Naruto one specifically, I don't really have a, super deep connection to them so with the um, shippuden ops i honestly i remember the first one and nothing beyond that because i probably haven't even heard them okay gotcha so gotcha. anything beyond this point when you do your intros i'm gonna have no clue what they are i'm like oh that's an <laughs> opening cool and i don't even know until like when i up, up, up edit the episode and I have to like find the op credit list on youtube and download it and then i have to just watch through it until oh there's a good like five ten second clip i can use and then yeah so anyway, uh, last comment. I didn't have a whole lot of comments because I feel like, well, if we do the episode earlier, that's less time for people to comment. So yeah. Anyway, uh, Snapple for Apple 
uh, suggests that the, um, oh yeah, because we were talking about the ninja codes last time, or I was mentioning how I felt it was odd that, like, the first Okage who started the ninja villages doesn't seem to, hold, you know, go along with the, the shinobi codes that are supposed to be, like, super important to this whole ninja, like, every village, like, Zabuza was mentioning the codes, like, they seem what, ubiquitous is the word I was looking for, but apparently the second Okage was the one who made, made the codes, so, um, or he started the Ninja Academy, so he might have been the one who, um, came up with the Ninja Codes, but it's just, so I guess, like, that in that case, it does make sense for the first two, the, and the second Okage to have different sort of views, I suppose, but, uh, still a little, like, but even then, he didn't seem, sin- like, or not sincere, that's not the word I'm looking for, uh, he didn't see, seem super, like, confident in that, uh, deduction, so I don't know how, like, canon the exact s- source of the Ninja Codes are, but, uh, I don't know, just a world building thing. So yeah, it's like, I guess it's just, it's fine, I guess, like, especially if that is the case with the two different Hokages having two different views, but, um, I don't know, again, this is just, like, things needing to be established earlier that weren't, so, eh. Alright, so getting into the discussion, finally. (laughs) I I gotta say, I really like how this arc starts, because you have Sai reading this book, like, how to make friends, Um, and I'm just like, well, that's just perfect. (laughs) <laughs> yep, that is perfectly Psy. Well, and it's like, it goes with what I was saying last time, where, you know, he's a character who I feel like, like, we only really see him in the beginning of this arc, and the parts we see him in aren't, like, they aren't, like, groundbreaking for this type of character, I wouldn't say, but they're, they're fine, they're entertaining. It, it's something for Psy to do, yes, which is and, more uh, than we know, can like, say thought... for some of the other characters, especially later on. Yeah, I mean, even Sai might end up in that pile later, um, but for now, I mean, even in this arc, he doesn't do much aside from this opening, but um, I mean, neither does Sakura, that's normal, <laughs> but yeah, they're kind of wrapping up the last arc more fully, and yeah, and you know, Sai is trying to change himself, like, like he does this thing, he, he gets this running joke where he starts trying to nickname everyone, <laughs> and he calls, like, Sakura homely, because she's not that pretty, uh. but it's just, <laughs> and it's just, like, I don't know, it, again, it, like, it doesn't feel like a super original joke, like, or at least, cl- this is kind of what I wanted, like, a cl- character clumsily trying to get close to other people, and it works, you know? Like, um, after this, they're talking with, like, Choji and Shikamaru and Ino and stuff, and he, he he's, like, about to call, uh, Choji chubby, and I actually went, like, oh, shit, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, uh, because, of course, that's Choji's thing. You were reacting along with the characters, like, oh, no, don't do that. Exactly. I was kind of surprised that I did that, too, just because, uh, I don't know, the, the <laughs> it was a good little moment. See, I, I the one thing I have noted here is how there's this one part where they're, well, when Sai first meets up with uh, Sakura and Naruto, and he's talking about, like, referring to them casually, and I feel like this is just something that got lost in translation, because I'd imagine there's hmm. something with honorifics there. Yes, Because otherwise right, he's just right, like, right. Naruto, Sakura, and it's like, you didn't change anything. So there's got to be something there that was lost He might have been saying, like, Kun or Chan instead of San. I'm guessing that's where it was. Um, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a little... I, I, I did notice, kind of notice that, but I didn't know anything down. Maybe it's just because I expected it at this point, or maybe I just didn't notice, so... I feel like I noticed, but it's fine. So I mean, like, yeah, I, yeah. like good, I, good I know I, I at least know what's happening here, but it's just, I guess, one thing that doesn't really work yeah, well in English. So. Yes, or sorry, go on. Well, yeah, I mean, because I, because I remember watching that, like, that part in the anime too, and I was like, it, back, mm. like, especially back when I was watching the the anime a couple of years ago, when I didn't understand as much about the language, I didn't get it. I was like... And you were watching the dub too, right? Or yeah, no? yeah, I was watching the dub at that point, so... Okay. It was just one thing that didn't didn't hit me at first, because I didn't understand Japanese, and I... Not that I understand it now, but <laughs> I knew even less. Well, honorifics are one of the harder things to sort of... Because they do hold meaning, and changing them especially holds meaning. Like, um, so... And what a lot of subtitles will do, or especially dubs, is that, like, they'll... Normally characters refer to each other by their surnames, because that's less... Fo- that's less... Uh, that's more formal, rather. It's less casual. So when you, res- you know, when you don't know someone as well, or you're being more respectful, you refer to them by, his- by their surnames. But that's pretty awkward, you know, S- in English, because you wouldn't refer to someone, especially... Especially two kids in school or something like that, where they would use their surnames. They wouldn't refer to each other 
but but in English they would have to because that's the only thing that's like natural for the language. So um, but that so how do you change something that you already had to change? Like how did when when a character being less formal and using the given name instead of the surname? Like how do you change? How do you fix that when they're already using the given name? It's 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 a uh, it's a translation problem. That's just that's, one of the. Uh, this is, I guess, a little unrelated, but that's just one of the things I like about the Japanese language is how, like, there you kind of like as you form relationships with people, you kind of break through these mini barriers with like honorifics and uh, surnames yeah. and whatnot. So, like, I don't know in English. Like, sometimes some people that I know, like people I'm friends with, will refer to each other by last names, and that's kind of like our casual way of doing it but it doesn't it's not the same it's not like a widespread thing so it's yeah. just one of those things that it just doesn't work it just doesn't translate yeah right exactly so anyway um i mean mostly what's happening in these scenes is kakashi's like uh, naruto we're gonna we're gonna train you up we're gonna get you get, you're gonna get good at long last and um and they just hang out with asuma and gang because they sort of bump into them but we cut away to an introduction of some new characters, uh, two of which stick around for at least a little bit, and one of whom does, I don't, well, not this, this other character is na- named, but she, she's a tailed beast chick, uh, with the two-tailed cat. So this is actually, I think, um, yeah, this is our second time seeing, like, a tailed beast, or, um, who is it, Naruto, I think, right? Yeah, because yeah. we had Gara and this. Yes, so this is, yes, and then, um, and spoilers, she was a tailed beast. <laughs> now she's dead. She's fucking dead. But we're also kind of building into the, like, we're introduced to Kakuzu and Hidan, who are going to be with us for a little while longer. But, um, you know, they get there. We we get introduced there. It's sort of like dynamic and some of their quirks, you know, as with as is typical with the Katsuki members there, you know, they've got their, you know, sort of like similarities and oppositions where, you know, I guess... You know, he, uh, Hidan is very, like, pious, and Kakuzu just doesn't give a fuck. He's more like, about money than God, I suppose. And then, of course, they're both immortals, as we, or in, or at least less fragile than most. But this is sort of continuing the trend with the Akatsuki of how people who are paired up, like, they work well together, but they typically don't get along. Act like, we well had, together, yes. We had that with yeah. uh, Deidara and, and Sasori. Then, yeah, that was a good. That's a good point. In a and way, then, um, you do kind of get that with Itachi and Kisame. I was about to say because they they seem to have a pretty fine relationship. They're like it's not necessarily like friendly, but professional. Like they're yeah. just they're just like yep, you sure are Kasame, and yep, you sure are Itachi. Like yeah, if anything, they're not threatening each other. Ones, yeah, they were the ones who got along <laughs> the best so far. Maybe they're the only ones in the Akatsuki who could potentially get along so, with uh, one of the other members. So that's why they're paired up together. Like everyone else is just well, except I guess Pain and Conan. Uh, spoilers. But, um, cause they're friends, but, uh, yeah. But I mean, it makes sense cause like they, their goals are kind of loosely, like, I mean, I don't know why I say like Sasori was in the Akatsuki, like, uh, was he out for money? Did he just want more time to do his like super puppet art stuff? You know, Deidara doesn't seem to give a fuck. Like on it, like, like Kakuzu wants money, you know, like, oh, you know, there we go. Uh, he, and then uh, I think Kidon's also in it or I forget, like he's not just in it for violence, I don't think, but he, they, at least they bring up the... This, the the sort of like differing goal like they, we'll get into that later I guess but yeah they they do have differing goals in, within the organization which is something not really commented on before I don't think but yeah they uh, take out the two tailed cat and they're like oh we're going to check out land of fire and see if we can't find a tailed beast guy there um, was there anything else to say about this moment I mean I did think it was particularly interesting how ha- because we had already established beforehand that there were. The Akatsuki had already captured, like, two or three tailed beasts before oh, Gara. Yeah, was, yes. But this time we actually get to see... We get Gara see, was their third. This was their fourth, I believe. Yeah, so we get to see a bit of or, their abilities in action ahead of time, or at least Hidans. We don't really see anything from Kakuzu, but, uh... Yeah, and even with Hidans, it's very vague. Like, he has a scythe and something... There's, like, well, we see the magic circle, but we don't really see that it's, like, relevant to his fighting style yet, because he's just... We, we're, this is more for his personality, like, uh, you know. Um. I mean, there was a kind of an interesting, I guess you could call it uh, a fake out, where on the one page, like, you cut, like, they cut away from the fight back to, like, Naruto's gang, and then they cut back to the fight, and you just get this shot of, like, Hidan has been stabbed through the chest, and it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. wait, did With they, fl- were they defeated? 
And then you flip to the next thing, and <laughs> nope, nope, it's the other way around. And he's just doing, like, some fucking ritual. He's just like, like yeah, this is normal. <laughs> so, for my religion, um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that, yes. Like, I mean, honestly, I feel like it was a shade forced just because the the cutaway was so nothing. Like, oh, Kuranai, she exists. Uh, that was it. That's literally all I get from the scene. Like, yeah. Asuma's talking with Kakashi for some reason, like... There's no reason for the cutaway, but there had to be a cutaway, so li- little little clunky in that regard. But I do like the idea of, you know, oh shit, I can't believe uh, Hidan is fucking dead, like, five seconds after we met him. Yeah, because um, I, I know that, um, I noted in my one video about Hunter x Hunter how Togashi will kind of cut away from fights. And, like, he'll build up to a fight, but then, like, not actually show it, but he does so for with, like, a, uh, like a clear sort of, like, tonal or narrative purpose. But here... Um, the cutaway just kind of seems like Kishimoto wasn't sure how to, how to write a fight, like how to actually show it, which, I mean, I guess is fine. It's not like this was a, a major character or anything. It was just someone who was just introduced. And of course he didn't want to spoil their abilities quite yet. Like this is what it feels like to be setting up how strong these guys are, like building up their power without showing them their abilities. So I can, you know, I can kind of understand that, but, um. But yeah, I guess you were just right that but it, yeah, it's, the, or, the cutaway just kind of seemed a little un well not not unnecessary to the fight obviously but what what gets shown yeah, is but, well, eh. yeah yeah it's, it's complete it's just kind of like okay I guess <laughs> also there is the 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 detail that this this Jin Cherokee can uh like actually like become the tailed beast without. Like, with Naruto, how he has all the side effects where it, like, destroys him, this person is, like, actually fused with theirs or whatever. Um, so, like, they... Yeah, they... So, they like, they're able to give over control while still have Like, because this isn't, like, Tail Beast Mastery, like, say, Naruto comes into much later. This is... Or... And it's not quite, like, a rage mode like Gara or Naruto's, like, two, one tails or four tails forms. This is, like... Yeah, this is a complete... And, well, this also happens, I think, with the three-tailed, uh as we see later with Toby, because I think, I or maybe no, no, we no, only no. see that one with, in, uh, with the three tails. So maybe it's a loose beast? Is it, is yeah, it a beast the, not sealed in it? Okay, it yeah, was. Yeah, okay. the third beast, or the third tail was just the the monster. There, like, there was no host, and that's why Datara comments that it's weaker. Okay, so, see, well, I thought that was weird, because later on, don't we see, don't, like, during the war, don't we see all the Jinchuriki, like, resurrected with the, um, what's it called, uh, Fucking, um... That giant statue, the tentails? What's the... Edo Ido, Ido ten, Ido Tensai. That Ido thing. Tensai. Like, or... Oh, oh the VG don't... Or maybe I missed... I just remember... There, I definitely remember there's a cover spread with all nine of them. Uh, uh, in, uh, inclu- including this one right here who just died. You know, Gara, Killer B, Naruto, and then everyone else. No one else who showed up before that point. Um, but so there's like a three-tailed uh, Jinchuriki, but there's... uh, Where'd they come from? I don't know. It, maybe it was like the last one or something like how did the i don't know maybe some of the things about like if if naruto died would the would the Q, the kyubi would die too i guess right because they have like a weird uh yeah because otherwise there'd was... be no reason for a kyubi yeah so yeah that was the thing so with, what like, circumstances when, i was gonna say that was like what i had mentioned how when jiraiya threw naruto off the cliff um like it would have been pretty bad if the if that released the tailed beast, but no, they died together. Yes, yes. So the, then the question becomes: How did the the three tailed turtle just get out and about? Like, did someone undo the sealing ritual or the unsealing ritual, but without expect just to free the tailed beast, like for no reason? I don't know. Seem it just seems like a little weird thing. Like maybe I'm wrong about the third tailed. Uh, beast uh, Jinkuriki showing up later because uh, I I swear there was a part of the manga. Where all the, the 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 others get revived, but I didn't actually read the manga, so I can't uh, uh, say that with confidence. So and, uh, maybe I should just move on before I uh, dig that my boot further into my, my mouth. Uh, okay, so um, I guess this is I guess we're honestly I feel like this arc is going to be quick to go through because it's mostly fights and training, and those have traditionally been easy to talk about because you get this like another another kind of build up scene where you know Hidan and Kakuzu bust into this the place with all the uh, Buddhist uh, the bald priest looking guys and oh yeah they mention a like oh bingo book book head worth 30 million which means nothing like it's a big number but we've never had a number like this before so it's just like we know these guys are strong and 
the fact that these guys are like, um, well, I don't know, they're, they're just like, we're just here for the money, so... But it's like, uh, I guess, yeah, it's, it's more building them up. But also, of course, I mean, it does lead into the next, uh, the rest of the arc because they start some shit here, and then um, the the la- the village of leaves is notified, and they have to act, and that gets the rest of the arc going. I mean, I will say, I I like how this arc plays out because up till this, well, you know, I guess there are sort of negatives with it as well. Now that I think about it, but how we start off with like a group of characters doing a thing, and then. Uh, they're like what they do finishes and then it leads to another group of characters, characters doing another thing, but it's not like all centered around, I guess it, it's something different for the series. Whereas beforehand, like either Naruto was at the center of everything or, um, trying to think of another arc now. Well, it's an arc that goes across multiple locations in a not like, I wouldn't say non-organic way, just a, a sort of like. It's not like the tuning exams were like, oh, they're going to this place with this purpose. No, these guys are just like sort of out and about doing their thing. So you travel from this temple to, uh, you know, from the, uh, pl- the village and, or the, wherever the, they were finding this two-tailed cat. And then, then of course you're cutting back to Naruto training in Konoha. And so it, it jumps around a bit. It's a little, like, cause one of the, so you get a bunch of different locales, you know, even if like at the end of the day, they're still fighting in a forest, uh, at least for, or a cave you know, for the final encounters, but at least we get, like, this temple, which has all these cool, like, there's, like, a Tengu statue and, and stuff, so that's that's kind of neat, I guess, um, and that, you know, so you got some different locales, that's nice, but, um, there was one thing I noticed, though, because when they bust into the temple, they get, uh, called out for being Akatsuki members, but as I remember it, Akatsuki was a secret organi- organization, so my guess is that after the, they attacked the, um, the sand village, then people were probably, that they probably, I think, I feel like that put them on the world stage a bit more like now they're being recognized, I guess. So, or unless there was something I missed. So, did well, you yeah, I, that, I, I would say that's probably what did it, especially considering like they entered the village, but nobody really died. So like they could see their robes and understand like, Hey, that's the, the calling card of the Akatsuki. Yeah, yeah, because in the back before the time skip, uh, Itachi and Kasami were just chilling in Konoha in their robes, and I remember reacting to that. I'm like, wait a minute, but yeah, they were secretive at that point. So, like, only Jiraiya knew because he was doing information gathering, and he told Kakashi at some point. Um, and then again, yeah. like Itachi and Kasame didn't make a huge, like a huge, st- not statement, but no, like a huge not at noise. All. Whereas like Datara is like right above the village, front and center, He's, hogging yes, the spotlight. Exactly. Yeah, if you know, Kisame, they they fought a handful of Joni, not exactly enough to make a a worldwide impression. Like these are these are people nowhere near where the Akatsuki have really been before, as far as we know. But they're still recognizing them. So yeah, it's definitely you know it's a notable shift. You know, these they're now the Akatsuki are now known as these worldwide S class super dangerous criminals. So you know, neat little neat little change. Um. I don't know. See, this arc's gonna might be weird to talk about because it jumps around so much, which you know <laughs> is fine for the arc because you're getting a few things happening each chapter. But for like our discussion, I'm just like, okay, do we talk about like Naruto's whole training arc now, or do we talk about it later? <laughs> so, or like, because there's the uh, there's the, then there's the three tailed fight, and then the uh, Asuma um, going into I don't know. Let's just talk about Naruto's training arc, I guess. Like, maybe, for, I guess the whole of it. Um, because I was a little bit disappointed in it because it was, well, I mean, they, there's some world building. We, you know, we get to, we learn about the elemental natures, which again is something I feel like should have been established earlier because like, okay, here's a, here's a little thing that I thought was thinking about that uh, bothered me a little slightly because I feel like the perfect time to um build this up to would have been back in the Zabuza arc with uh, Haku because that was the first real time you had two elements against each other, ice and fire. But of course, ice, I think is water and wind. So... Um, actually, I'm going to double check that before I go on to my next point and make a complete fool yep, out of myself. Yep, it, it, it was water and wind. Yeah, it is wind and water. So, because it is wind and water, so water beats fire, but fire beats wind. So shouldn't ice, like, sort of neutral out to fire, you'd think? But instead, uh, Haku's ice is completely impervious to Sasuke's fire, which is, like, the la- like I. Fr- but, so, earlier, when I thought, I forgot that, I had forgotten that uh, ice was also Kekai Genkai, I thought the specific Kekai Genkai was the type of technique Haku was using, like, oh, it's special ice. No, but apparently that's just, is it, like, why, is this technique was specifically made to resist fire, which is oddly specific, or, 
Is it like, or, cause, I mean, if you're gonna establish like elemental properties, then why, like, it, it's done it here in a way that makes me look back to the older stuff and be like, okay, well, why was it like that then? And, like, cause there's never been a serious elemental clash, like, uh, th before this arc, except back then. And that one instance is also a little, like, if it was like, if it was like, uh, if ice was somehow water and earth, or water and, uh, Lightning? I don't. I don't know why that would make ice. But if it was like anything else, I wouldn't have noticed. I don't think or cared because it. It, it just happens to be the two elements that surround fire. As so, I don't know. It's like this. This is probably and it, even when they do establish it, like it's like it's just a. It's Pokemon. It's super effective kind of thing. Like it's not really an interesting dynamic necessarily. Like I don't know. How do you feel about this whole elemental? Well, I was like releases. the first thing I thought of when this was introduced. Uh, I was curious as to when Kishimoto came up with this. Like, I'm curious if there if there's some sort of an interview out there about this. But because like with with Nen, uh, Togashi introduces his sort of um, his system fairly early into the series, like not right off the bat, but um, yes, yeah, so you're talking you can, about the the Nen systems like uh, emitter and enhancer and conjurer, like yes. the different classes of Nen abilities, which are less. It's less like an elemental thing and more of a like what type of ability it is. Like so, but then like yeah, here I was curious if Kishimoto sort of designed his chakra system around this idea, or if it was something he just came up with on the fly, like. As yeah. he got well, because I mean, series. as I might have noted, I might have mentioned it before, but it's like the paper test with putting your chakra in the paper and getting a unique result. I've only ever seen that in Hunter Hunter with the water leaf in the water test, and uh, to test your um, your Nen ability type. And so mildly similar. I mean, but, I, d um, I definitely did like the idea <laughs> of like the litmus, like the litmus paper. Yes, like, yes. Um, and I thought like the because like oh. I guess with. I don't know where I was going with that. Well, I guess, like, what, well, what I was going to say is, like, the fact that I, I can make this comparison between Naruto and Hunter x Hunter, it's only, make, like, making me feel like, well, Naruto could have been more well executed because here's, like, the same thing being done better, like, ten years before, not ten years, but, like, more than five years before this part of Naruto happened. Because this, I was reading these chapters as we came, they came out, especially, like, the ones later on, but it was, like, so this was, like, 2007, and the... Heaven's Arena arc must have been, like, early 2000s, so, you know, it, it, it's... And I, I, I can't imagine to, um, Kishimoto not having read Hunter x Hunter. Like, even though, like, again, with the Sasuke Kurapika, like, I do feel that they're majorly different enough that I, I wouldn't call it plagiarism, but it would surprise me to hear that, to, uh, that, that Kishimoto somehow came up with both Sasuke and this uh, paper chakra test without having touched hunter hunter because they do have there are things with just surface elements that are fairly similar you know so maybe i mean maybe there's some other like myth like maybe there's something about red eyes in japanese mythology or um just and dead clans and vengeance <laughs> so that's why i can't separate just some elements of Naruto from some elements of Hunter x Hunter because it's just too close. So, but then having that difference makes me, especially with this one where it's just like, what's Genjutsu? I'm pretty sure Genjutsu does, isn't real um, because it never comes <laughs> up. It's so irrelevant in the tr trifecta. So it's like, why even have it? Yeah, so. uh, and then like, and then again with the Yin Yang release, Ninjutsu just keeps getting more and more piled onto it. And it's just without really like a reason. Uh, I mean, as far as training arcs go, like, it does establish this elemental system that comes in later in the fight with... Like, that. see, at least he did that right. He established rules, and then he showed the rules with, you know, he here's how elements work. Okay, here's a fight in which elements are kind of important with Kakuzu. So that makes, you know, there you go. That's fine. And as long as he keeps consistent with it later on, like, sure. But again, it's not just, it's not the most interesting, but it's something. I guess, I mean, I don't know... Maybe this is just me speculating this, but, like, when I look back on how this was introduced and I try to relate it to past events, like, I know he brings up examples of, like, oh, this is how, like, with Haku's technique, like, this is how, this is why this works. But I don't, I don't quite get the same feeling as I do with, like, with, um, Hunter Hunter, like, there, there are certain moments beforehand, and uh, granted these aren't specific techniques, but, like, Zetsu pops up in the Hunter exam, uh... Or wait, is that Hisoka? Or wait, yeah, the, like, well, whatever, whatever the technique is that Gon uses to. Oh, that's right. That, I was my first. thought was the character. <laughs> yeah, Zetsu yeah, makes well, a cameo um, in Hunter Hunter. 
<laughs> it's just like a Venus flytrap looking motherfucker, like introduced in Hunter Hunter years before he actually shows up he in Naruto. Was the narrator and Naruto, the whole time. another thing from Hunter Hunter. <laughs> no, um, I, I know what you're talking about though, or specifically the part where like Hisoka's cards, where he makes them really sharp with Nen, and then we see a uh, wing do like the exact same thing later, and it's like this little click moment where you're like, oh. That's how Hisoka did that thing. So, and yeah, you see, but then, like, comparing that to the Haku using his ice mirrors and interacting with the fire, like, I'm just thinking, like, wait, that, doesn't that not quite work with this elemental system? Like, sh- uh, what, what should the interaction be there with a neutral? Like, should it just be just that neutral? But it wasn't neutral. It was Sasuke didn't do shit. <sighs> and then there's also an interesting yeah. question that Naruto asks, uh, where he's like, well, Almost like, how does this apply to medical ninjutsu and Genjutsu? Oh god, that pissed me off! And then because Kakashi's just like, hmm, it's gonna take too long to explain, and it'll only just confuse you. And I'm like, hmm, isn't that convenient? <sighs> yeah, that, like I said, I, I forgot about that until you mentioned it, but yeah, that pissed me off because, like, he bring, Naruto brings up an interesting question. This is like the first time he's ever done that. He doesn't usually care enough to ask questions. And then here he's saying something well, like, he mentioned, I'm like, yeah, I want him that too. And Kakashi's like, uh, well, uh, duh, uh, duh, duh, duh. Uh, see, I, Kakashi, I feel like it, it wouldn't have been a problem if Naruto hadn't mentioned it. Like, just don't address the question and I'm not going to ask <laughs> exactly. it. But then you, oh you brought God. it front and center. Now it's like, okay, how, how does or this the, work? <sighs> And again, like, it's nice to have some world building, but it doesn't add a whole lot in the end. So it's like, well, what was the point of world building? Like, and, and you know, if you're not gonna have an, like, that's, a, you know, world building is nice and important, you know, but it's like, compare this to, again, Hunter Hunter, where Gon learns, like, the basics of Nen, and then he applies the basics of Nen in, like, the rest of the climax of the arc, and it's like, that's, sure, that's good, and then, but it's continually relevant and built upon, but it's like, are elemental jutsus really going to come up again the, in a meaningful see, fashion like this? The problem I have with this, and granted, I could be off base because my memory of later Naruto is kind of iffy, but I don't recall this concept sticking around for the duration of the series. Like I, When I think of some of the later battles in the series, I can't even think of how to apply elements to it, but... Again, I yeah. I so it's, it feels extraneous, and there's a lot of time spent on this extraneous. Like, I mean, and I, I guess to go on to later, like I like Naruto putting in the hard work, and the Shadow Clones isn't quite as like game breaking as I like. It's still very broken for Naruto's sake, but I, I thought it was very setting breaking. And like, well, if I could use even one Shadow Clone for an extended period of time, I could double my work output. You know, and I guess, but I guess that, that can't be a thing. Like, Shadow Clones are meant for, um, short usage, which is why I guess they don't have, like, a, like, you can't just make a Shadow Clone and have them go spy on an enemy country for, like, months. And it splits up your chakra, so. Well, and Kakashi, yeah, there were... well, Kakashi does point out, like, I guess for the scale of this, that because Naruto only has that much of, like, a chakra reserve, but it, it is interesting to think about because Kakashi says that he particularly doesn't have, a much like much chakra to work with he's pretty limited but it makes me wonder like ha- have there been any other people in the past with like i don't know gara for example he's got a tail well like, then again he never did chat of clones so yeah right forget it drop that point <laughs> well even th- th- i mean yeah i guess like i'm trying to yeah that's a good point because there was the uh there's other guys with lots of chakra like i think kasame or maybe maybe does he have a lot of chakra or does he just have a sword that absorbs chakra I, re- I remember him saying, they say, like, oh, he's, like, he's, like, the zeroth-tailed beast because he has so much chakra yeah, that's... or something like that. And so then, it would be interesting, I mean, like, if he had... Because I'm pretty sure he does Shadow Clones, so, like, has he ever done something similar? Would it apply to him? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and I feel like the, most of the rules should apply for, like, other clones, too. Like, I don't see why a water clone would disappearing would work work any differently. In fact, it, what, wouldn't um, clones like that last longer because they're made of a material than uh, Chakra? Like, I feel like because they have more something more substantial to hold on to, they might have a bit more stability, you could say. Um, though that's complete, complete baseless conjecture, but at least I feel like it's an idea that might work. But, you know, I feel like, like with the chakra system, I feel like, um, you know, Kishimoto isn't necessarily taking it to the conclusions that, like, like, that he could be. He's not, he's not going deep enough into the ideas here. Like, what would a character with, a, who knows a thousand jutsus actually fight like? We don't get that. We get, uh, the third Okage who uses, like, three jutsus. Uh, and we're just like, okay. That was a little underwhelming. And then I guess, like, I mean, I did say Naruto is working hard. So, like, I guess to sort of say something, like, I feel like people, 
ascribe natural born talent and they say, or, or something like with Naruto, in Naruto's case, he's got the, the nine tailed fox inside of it. And Goku is another example because he's a Saiyan and he's basically stronger than like all the other characters by a lot because he's a Saiyan. But I don't wholly agree with that because like a lot of, like, yes, they do have something that no other character can have, but through hard work, like, like Goku's still training all the fucking time. Well, like when he you, never stops. This <laughs> reminds me of that, I forget which episode if it was, but in Dragon Ball Dissection, uh, Mystera Fusion talks about how the the whole you uh, return from near death and you get a big strength boost, how that is established is that, in yes. the Frieza arc, but it only really pops up once when Vegeta gets, you know, when Krillin attacks Vegeta. That's okay. basically like, other than that, That's it's not really addressed it, I mean, again. So you could huh. make the argument that... Um, like all of what Goku's doing is based on, because like especially with a guy like Toriyama who can be so scatterbrained at times and he'll just forget <laughs> plot points he's established. It, like it's still Goku putting in the work. Um, and then I guess the same would kind of apply to Naruto here because he does have all this talent. Yes, he has a unique characteristic that no one else can really capitalize on, but he's still putting it like he's he yeah he still had to put in all the effort to do this sort of like you know four thousand hours of work in two days kind of deal. Like so. It's not like he's just like being hand like this isn't like um like he's not being handed a power up like a f- you might see in say fairy tale where the characters lit- literally do nothing and just endlessly get rewarded by the story and it's really really fucking tiring but so it, it, it does it impact the themes a little bit I could I guess I could see that well, this, but this at the same the- time it's not like Naruto's doing nothing and still getting really strong like that's that would be yes you know so but i feel like by this point in the story we've we've completely like if it hasn't been dropped before the whole underdog thing is completely gone like no yeah naruto is above kakashi now as by his own words or at least at the end of the arc well i mean like even the idea that he was ever an underdog in the first place is undercut when kakashi is saying like this is a technique that only you can do like only you have the the power the reserves to pull this off which is very much yeah, so yeah. a like a a gift, like a natural, not natural because it's obviously the nine tailed fox, but something that was this is something unique to him, as we've mentioned. So yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Although with the idea of so, um, like or... having talent, but also still working hard, it makes me think of the the difference between Lee and Sasuke back in the tuning exams. How Lee had taken all this time to get his get the speed that he has and perfect his techniques, whereas Sasuke manages to re- like replicate that mostly in the span of like a month just because he has he's more naturally talented so naturally he would uh learn faster he would progress faster yeah but he still wasn't quite able to match up in some aspects because he wasn't like he his body wasn't didn't have the you know years of just pure training that so he wasn't able to keep up for as long even though he could basically use the same techniques so but but you he, know, there were still differences there like and as i think did naruto did naruto say it or did a commenter say it where uh, rock lee is a genius of hard work like he's still talented in that like he's got a level of willpower that just you know he's i mean not that it's like this inborn gift you know but um because i mean really like if you want to talk about like talent like talent as in like natural potential and realizing that potential then i guess like i mean hmm, how easy it is to realize that potential is a form of talent i don't know it's a there's a lot of aspects to it which is i guess why shonen is able to like carry on while still like it's not this idea is still going i think Um, maybe i don't know what series do the hard work angle as strongly as this one but um off that are major um, right now, as in currently airing, but um, I'm sure it still exists. At least the underdog t- stuff does generally, but um, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> well, um, I mean, my like my hero academia kind of does the underdog thing at first with like the the idea that yes. uh, Deku is quirkless and so he's beneath everybody else and he has to climb his way to the top. But I don't feel like that's a core theme with that show. Like, yeah, he starts off as an underdog, but. It's like that series is more focused on what are the ramifications of being given this power and uh, how and what does it mean to be a hero and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I would say I that like in... Rock Lee, like not to say that there aren't any other instances of this out there, but Rock Lee seems to be the, the figurehead for, you know, hard work trumps, you know, that whole mentality that's brought up here. It seems to be like the maybe it's just because Naruto's the most popular, but like <laughs> I don't know. When I think of that mentality, I just immediately think of Rock Lee. 
That's fair. Um, and I'm I'm struggling to think. Like the only thing I can think of even close is another character who sort of sort who who even outright says that he that he doesn't want to be considered talented. He, he like because this character is like he's also talented and hard work, so to speak. Uh, though not he's not a fighter, but um, he 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 also has reasons to think like because talented pe- or he has a, a thing. Whereas like grandfather was talented and got screwed over because he didn't learn everything. He just sort of got like an easy pass and then he uh, whatever. So that's like the only other character I could think of. But I still think of Rockley first. So that's a that's fair. And I've read other series like I've, or at least I think I've gone through more shonen stuff than you on average. Um, but uh, so I don't know. This is fine. I mean, you went through One but, um, Piece, yeah, so it's... I think at least as far as, like... <laughs> one Piece pure... doesn't really have a lot of hard work, actually. Like, there's still struggle, meaningful conflict, but I wouldn't say that working hard is a major theme. Uh, like, gr- there's definitely improvement and growth, and... But that's more on a character level, like a per- like um, overcoming personal flaws rather than just becoming stronger. Because, well, I guess we'll, t- we'll talk about that later. Well, but, I was um, talking more so just about when you, we get to one piece. you being exposed to more shonen than me, because One Piece is inherently... Oh, yeah more shonen than any other shonen because it's <laughs> longer. <laughs> I see what you're saying now. Okay, that's good. Yeah, what you said is also okay. good. So I guess, like, um, other thoughts on the like uh, the training arc. So I did like Yamato, like, I was slightly wrong earlier, because I, I say, like, Yamato has nothing really to go on after this arc. But we do get, get this little bit with him and Kakashi, where he's, like, trying to impress Senpai. He wants yeah. Senpai to notice him. And Kakashi's like, well, you're the only junior I'd actually consider, like, an equal, so you're all right. And Yamato's like, oh my god, Senpai noticed me. <laughs> and just... That was kind of fun. This idea that <laughs> Kakashi can sweet-talk anyone, which does come up in an interesting... <laughs> probably... Possibly one of my favorite interactions in the series thus far, when uh, uh, Yamato's like, wow... Well, this is after Naruto is, like... Seems like he's ready to give up. Like, he's not... This technique is impossible. He'll never create it. But then Kakashi you know, kind of debunks that. And then Yamato says, wow, you really are a sweet talker. And Kakashi says, nah, just a believer. And it's like, holy shit, that's cool. (laughs) And of course, to come from Kakashi, it's Um, just, it just adds to his overall, um, I don't know, memorability. Is that the right phrasing of that word? It's, It's not really something you can quote because it's an interaction, but I mean, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Though, um, I guess, yeah, the only other thing I have to say about the arc is, like, you know, they try to do the world-building stuff with the elemental system that maybe comes up again later, but, uh, like, I, d- I know the elemental releases do, like, I know there's, like, lava release and dust release, but I don't know if there's, like, an interaction, like, again, and they, they don't never establish how um, elemental weaknesses work with double, like, they, t- they tell us, like, here's how double chakra re- releases work. And, you know, with uh, Kekai, Kekai, Kekai Genkai's, and here's how elemental weaknesses work, but, or, I might have said that wrong. But they don't really explain, like, what happens What happens when ice interacts with lava. Like, uh, fire beats, or water beats fire, but does, or, uh, uh, uh. So, like, they don't really <laughs> explain earth how water? it beats it. Yeah, it just does. It just works. Like, it, it's it's fucking magnets. It just fucking works. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, and they also mentioned that, like, um, getting, like, it's normal for, like, a Jonin to have two or three natures. But, um, so, it, you know, they just say that, like, oh, people learn other elements, but it's so, like, but then people have their own natural elements, too, so I guess, I don't know, I guess that's fine, but it's just a little, it, it's not delved into enough, either in this arc or in the series, to really be satisfying, and what the, the rest of the training arc has to offer, you know, we get some of that, you know, like you were saying, Kakashi characterization especially, but, like, Naruto, it's like, he, the, his solution to the Rasengan problem is the same solution as to the last Rasengan problem, Add like there's no change. Clone. Yeah, I'll use three instead of two, and I'm just like, well, okay, I guess. Yeah, like it's not really a, a big character revelation. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there's no there. Well, there's no character. Like again, there's no character arc to the actual training. It's just Naruto doing the same old Naruto. Like you know, he has that moment of self doubt earlier. Like it's more for Kakashi than Naruto, if anything. Um, so it's just not a like I I again I want to defend training arcs. But it's kind of hard to find a good training arc, you know. Like, uh, so, like, what, 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 what would work this arc is if it was, you know, the elements of resistance came back multiple times and in really important fashion. But it doesn't. Maybe, uh, maybe it will, and I'll be completely, I'll look like an idiot. I mean, here, I'm sure it'll uh, pop you, you up in like the next couple of arcs, but I don't feel like it lasts the duration. I don't remember, like, because I'm just trying to remember back to like Pain versus Jiraiya or Sasuke versus Itachi or Rochimaru versus Sasuke, and it's like, no, they don't. 
because no one uses element jutsu. It's it's not common enough. You yeah, you think of some of the other things that get used later, like sage mode. Is that elemental? I no, I think that uses it's like a, it uses like a third type of ch- it uses nature chakra instead of like mind or body chakra. I don't remember. Then, there's so much. There's so see that's the thing. They he just keeps adding on more and more things, and we're we've only like we so we don't we kind of don't know shit about chakra or jutsus yet. But we're we're already we're almost halfway through the series. <laughs> like it's crazy I mean, to think that we're I, not even halfway through the series yet. <laughs> barely, barely, Bare, like we're very, we're very close. Like. Geez, um, like when I saw not, the, not... the title, or not the title cards, but like the opening volume bits, and it's like 2007, I was like, holy crap, we've, we're like eight years in, into Naruto now. <sighs> yeah. I do think there's this one interesting thing that ha- that happens at, like, right after, I guess, Naruto figures out how his, uh, how his new technique could work, where he says, oh, he, or no, he's, the, the exact dialogue is, wow. So Sasuke and I are compatible after all. And then Yamato's like, yep, <laughs> wind beats lightning. But Naruto's like, no, wind amplifies fire. And it's, uh... Yeah, yeah, that was probably the most, like, you know, or, well, I, I guess I was maybe trying to look to look a little deeper into it, because I was thinking, like, okay, well, if the fire is Sasuke's, like, Uchiha spirit, because they mentioned that Uchiha's type of fire, then lightning is, but lightning would be, like, Kakashi. So Naruto's... Like, I was trying to think, like, oh, he... Naruto's feeling that Yushiha traitor spirit in him, I guess. <laughs> um, so I was I was trying to, like, deepen it a bit. Like, because like, I, I guess a nicer way to put it might have been, like... Um, it, or, or or a way to sort of utilize the elemental system from a character base is have... If, if you could clearly tie, like, Sasuke's connection to the leaf with one element, might probably fire, and his connection to Orochimaru with another element... Which isn't, which doesn't work. Then you could have say like, oh, you know, um, I can keep the fire alive in Sasuke, you know, even though I'm weak to the the part of him that that's a uh, Orochimaru representative, but he doesn't have an element that's connected to Orochimaru. So I see what he was going for, but um, I mean, I still like that bit. I just I just saw like, but it could be better. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, now that I'm thinking about it, like you bring up Orochimaru, and I'm thinking like the sound techniques. How do you equate that with an element? Like I could I could hazard a guess, but the thing about that is, like, it, it's not really clear. Like, I could say, well, maybe, uh, what was it, Zaku, like, he, like, shoots, like, wind, so that's a wind thing, yeah. I guess. Uh, Dosu but, could but, maybe see, be water, because he, like, messes with the, the ear things, but, like, I don't know. I can't really... Yeah, well, that's a... Cause I, and I think that, that there's a problem in trying to ascribe everything to an element, because I, th- I just sort of... Uh, like, I equate, like, Sage Vote and sound techniques... And just, you know, shadow clones to sort of like a normal type, so to speak. It almost an feels like technique, which just again goes back to the problems where, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to have this big, important elemental system, you know, like think about Pokemon for a second, you know, it would have, wouldn't it have been great and if Pokemon by the fifth gym, you're like, oh, did you know some type of po- attacks are super effective against other types of, like, no, they start the game with that fire, water, grass, boom, element weaknesses. Cause that's kind of the point of the game so they uh, so then the way he tacks it on but it's yeah i'm, I'm just repeating myself I, at this i'm point. curious to watch you know, how again, I'm not, like the rest of the series will plan will pan out yes, because we'll it almost like feels i sound like impassioned a, like the way i was going <laughs> like, to describe it was like a revolving door of different concepts because um yeah because like different different door, things pop up yeah. and then like we said with sage mode and whatnot it's almost like they just get replaced Yes, so we'll we'll talk more about it. Like I sound impassioned. I'm 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 not really like I'm I guess I'm not angry. I'm just more disappointed. It's not fairy tale. It could have been more, but it just like like again, we're looking at the series retrospectively or retroactively from it's over. So we can we can see all of these like you said like that's a good uh analogy of whatever um a revolving door. So we can see that revolving door and been like what if you spun it so fast everything merged together and you actually like built it up meaningfully across the story, you know, like, so that would have been nice. So yeah. Anyway, um, I don't have anything more about the state about the training arc. So can we talk Though about it, all of, uh, all of Asuma's death flags and how great <laughs> death flags are. I, I, this is one thing that I don't like about later Naruto is that the death, well, even not just later Naruto, like the death flags are so obvious. Oh yeah, with the third Hokage especially, that was the one with I really remember. With the third remember. Hokage, um, it happens with Asuma here, like he's talking about, oh, I'm a sacrificial piece, and it's like, huh, 
wonder what that could mean. And then later you're going to get stuff with Jiraiya. And it's like, huh, I wonder if he's going to die. Maybe. Who knows? Subtle. Um, the Osmo ones, either I didn't notice them, probably that, or they didn't bother me. I don't, cause, um, I mean, I do know, I didn't know he was going to die, so I, maybe I wasn't thinking too hard on it. Like, yep, he sure is going to die, but I don't know, but it's, I, I must just not have noticed, so. Um, I, I think, but yeah, like, I, I, he, like hmm. the stuff with the, with the shogi and the sacrificial piece, and he's talking about, like, oh, I, I mean, I feel like, I don't know if this would have been less of a problem for me if it hadn't, like, if it had been established earlier, like, if we had at some point gotten more interactions between Shikamaru and Asuma, because the thing about Asuma is that this is the arc yeah, where he gets the, other thing. the most yes. focus, and it's because it's the arc where he dies, so... Yes, which is very common, like, oh, look, this character is getting, um, becoming rel like, uh, the th- suddenly becoming relevant, oh, gee, I wonder what's going to ha- oh, no, <laughs> Look at what happened. They died. Um, like, it's kind of like a, well, what did you fucking expect? Like, it, 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 a character suddenly becoming relevant is, is in itself a death flag. I should have noticed that at least. Cause, cause yeah, Naruto just goes out of his way to see Asuma. Like, a character he's never actually interacted with before. Like, there was the barbecue scene earlier, I guess, but it's then, th- like, this is, like, the first one-on-one, re- I mean, Shikamaru is there, but this is the closest thing to a one-on-one ac- interaction he gets. Like, just, and then, and then he's fucking dead. Like, like, I, I mean, again, like, this is a series intended to be read by young, like, you know, I, 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 it's shown in Jump. A seven-year-old should be expected to, like, pick it up and, you know, get the gist of it. So, even if, though, there are, like, more teen-aimed series in Jump, like, uh, Death Note. But, so, you know, I can, I can forgive a lack of subtlety or nuance sometimes. Like, in this case, it didn't bother me, but I might have just not been paying attention. See, so, I, 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 I I'm totally, like, I don't think uh, it's, yeah, I don't think it's you, necessarily a problem in this particular instance, because I, I do like a lot, like, I do oh, like, like I what this you. is going for, like, the whole deal with, with Asuma and how it affects Shikamaru, because really, the focus of this arc is not on Asuma, it's on Shikamaru, so it's not as big yeah. of a deal that Asuma goes out the way that he does. It's just, I think the problem with me is that it happens over and over and over again that he'll bring in the, he'll bring up these characters yeah, yeah. and then yeah. make it so obvious that they're gonna, they're gonna be axed and then they get axed and it's, <sighs> it's like, well, okay, that happened. The, I sure, the, there's I guess. There's no surprise <laughs> factor with it. Yeah. 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 That's fair. Which I'm not saying that every no, death I mean... has to be a, a, out of nowhere shock. Like I'm not saying predictability is always a bad thing, but Eh, it's just when it i mean maybe if the, like i don't know because it's like again like i guess the problem with this it, within in this instance is like osmo sudden getting getting screen time and then dying so it's like like i mean even with the screen time like it's not like endearing me to his character like i'm not like oh no osmo's dead i'm not I, i'm not having much of a reaction it's like okay that's he's dead i guess that's okay sure whatever like i'm not Exactly the biggest Asuma fan, I guess. <laughs> well, there really <laughs> Which isn't a whole lot so... to go off of with him. Exactly. He's just he's just he's just kind of a guy who teaches Shikamaru who everyone likes better. So, yeah, like that. Uh, oh yeah, and then like fucking Kuro and I keep showing up this arc and does nothing. So it's like, well, because uh, so, oh she suddenly has like this super much deeper connection to Asuma that we didn't know about before. And it's like, oh okay, um, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> Why are we only saying bad things about the arc? Uh, let's find something good. Um, do you have anything to say about the scene where they capture the three-tailed uh, turtle with Toby and uh, being a dork and Dadar? Like these are like the comedy relief characters together being dorks. So, I mean, I really yeah, it's it, it's a cute little scene. I mean, Toby being Toby, and I mean it, it's Dadara. You know, I like Dadara, so anytime he's on screen is fun. Love seeing him being like super, super menacing to Toby's. Like, just complete uh, idiocy, if that's... <laughs> well, it, even Didar's, like, um, menacingness is still, like, comedic, like, because yeah. Toby's being a fucking dork, and, um, <laughs> like, oh, like, uh, Toby's like, oh, man, Didar, you should like to hear yourself talk, ha, 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 and then Didar, like, uh, blows him up. <laughs> it's just, it's, 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 so it's still very slapsticky. And then, of course, the moment where, um, <laughs> uh, like, Toby's, like, just chilling, and, uh... To- uh, Dadar is like trying to talk to him and then Toby's asleep <laughs> you know just just little fun moments so you know it was fine yeah like I, I there I said something nice you don't have to flog me in the comments <laughs> <laughs> yeah one of the I think one of the things that like one of the panels that stood out to me the most was that scene where like Toby's asleep and then you just get this really close up like dark 
a <laughs> brooding face bad. on Datara, and it's like, oh no. <laughs> And of course you get the explosion, the boom. So yeah, he just uh, he's just throwing bombs at Toby because why the fuck not? Um, okay, so now that we talked about that. We can get into the next fights where um, Asuma and uh, Shikamaru and those two guys and uh, versus at the uh, the uh, fucking um, Hidan and Kakuzu. Um, I was trying to remember their names. Oh wait, actually, I just real I was flipping through because there's still more the, the training we already talked about. Did you have anything else to say on the Kakashi vs. Sengon before we get into the Shikamaru Asuma fight? I mean, yeah, because it was interesting how he he talked about like trying to because one thing one thing that was set up here that we didn't even really talk about was the whole oh, change yeah, in fair. chakra, like combining the change in chakra right. nature and the change in chakra form. So like how the mm-hmm. the lightning blade was one thing or the Chidori. That was the, I guess, change in nature, but like he couldn't combine it with the change right. in form, which was the Rasengan, and like that then ties back to how I guess is Naruto's doing. But he's basically like, as he puts it, he's trying to look right and he's trying to look left at the same time, and then he re- that's which is of course what he realizes. Wait, I can do that if I make a clone. Shit. So, um, but yeah, it's like, uh, like I guess like I, I can't think of any other techniques like the Rasen Shuriken where they are like. Like, cause you have like lightning attacks that are kind of just lightning, and you have fire attacks that are kind of just fire. Like, I mean, I guess you could say with uh, Haku's ice mirrors, maybe would that be a change in form and a change in nature? Cause it's 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 a it's a ice element technique, but it also has like other proper. <laughs> See, this is where the lack of de- going into detail is just frustrating me now. <laughs> But I guess, like, again, is this something that's going to come up again? Uh, I mean, I think again, like with with this whole thing, I feel like it, it will definitely pop up at the very least in the next arc. But uh, I don't know how long it sticks. Right I don't. Before. I don't remember for sure. So because it it would genuinely <sighs> surprise me if he took all this time to flesh this one idea out and then just forget about it. Like it's got to come up again. But I just I like I just I I mean it's not like I've forgotten the parts that come after this. I don't remember them super well. But it's like I just think about pain and like pain mostly summons guys and Jiraiya Sage Mode introduces a whole new thing and Itachi just uses stuff we've already we already know about and Sasuke uses stuff we already know about so it's like and Orochimaru uses stuff we already know about so it's like they're not tying this idea into or maybe they are I can't talk about the future stuff because we're not there yet but I don't know I feel like uh, (laughs) this is my past knowledge of Naruto getting in the way I guess for a change or maybe not for a change but it's like yeah maybe I should stop worrying about how, how bad it could be uh, but, uh, I mean, I st- I'm still dissatisfied with how it ties back into older stuff. Like, like that could have been better. Uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see for what, for how all this information will come into play later. Because I just, it's hard to imagine it doing so. Like, how, like, okay, so say a character uses a technique like the Russ and Shuriken, like, um, where it's ch- nature and uh, form con- uh, control. So, like, all we're going to say is, like, wow, that guy's tough shit because he can do that thing that Naruto can do. Uh, that Kakashi has trouble, and the fourth Okage couldn't do. Like, it's just, I guess, you know, it builds up a character, but that's a lot of work to do something that, like, like, what would, what would it accomplish to not say it? You know, Naruto did a hard thing. That's the only reason that this idea was incorporated. So that Naruto looks cool for doing this hard thing, and that's fine. But then it's like, well, what, uh, that's, I mean, maybe it's not fine, actually. You know what? Fuck it. It's not fine. Like, we know that Naruto's doing something cool, but, <sighs> I, like, one of the questions I had was, like, because with the, the Chidori and the Rasengan, it's kind of, I guess, implied that the change in chakra nature, or at least in that particular instance, was stronger than the change in form. But it makes me wonder, is that, like, is that ge- like a is that generally a thing? Like, does the, the change in nature, is that more important, more powerful than the change in form? And then it's, like, the combination of that that makes it super all-powerful? All because we know that Kakashi can... He can do the Rasengan, he just doesn't because it's not as strong as the Chidori or the Lightning Blade for him. But is that an yeah. individual thing or is that a, a broader idea? Like, does that apply to everyone? Who knows? I'm a little done with this uh, topic, sorry. I, I, I tired myself out on that. Um, oh, man. But it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking remember this. Uh, Kishimoto, I'm coming for you in these future arcs. I'm gonna be like, oh, is this is this a technique, a form change, or is it a nature? Oh, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> so I guess we'll find. Okay. Um. So yeah, let's finally talk about the uh first establishing of Hidan's powers with his fight against Asuma and uh everyone. So because he's you know immortal, 
where he, you know, he's he he ta- feels pain, but he can get stabbed and shit. And then he fights, uh, you know, we Ozma is just kind of like a brawler guy. So, what do you have to say about this fight? Well, I there is this is more of a minor. Because I would say it's probably the or gone. Well, no, no, go ahead and say what you were gonna say first. Okay, because well, I don't know. I th- I feel it felt like this is probably the the best one in the arc, which isn't saying a, like oh, I mean, it's not. Yeah, like it's it's just like. It's neat. You get, you know, you get Hidon's powers established. You have Shikamaru like figuring out his powers, and then you know they keep, kind of, you know, just you have power plays, power play, powers playing off of each other. Like it's not quite conclusive. Like I guess Asuma dies, and you know, and obviously there's later fights. Like a lot of people, like well, I guess we'll get to the Shikamaru versus Hidon stuff because I, I that one's fine, but I do, I just think this one's a little bit more interesting. Wait, because the thing about this one is that it's not like the characters are outright. Because you can't kill Hidan, so it's different than just trying to beat a strong opponent. Like, there's another, I guess, another goal. They want to try to keep him out of his circle because they, because at that point, like Asuma yeah. could very easily die in this scenario. So they're they're not just trying to defeat him, but they're also trying to save Asuma. So they have to like do two things at once. Although I yeah. wish that the, the other two guys did more than just stand there for the majority. Yeah, of the that, I guess. Yeah, that that's the problem with like that's why it's not an amazing fight. Like, it, well, even Kakuzu yeah, yeah, doesn't Kakuzu do anything. Is, so, he's just standing on I the mean, sidelines the whole time. Which I mean, granted, Hidan does say not to do anything, but yeah, yeah. But for the other two guys, there's no excuse. It, it yeah, it just takes away a bit of the tension because these other two guys aren't doing a whole lot. Which I guess was fine at a point because Asuma. Like, he was in the circle, so Asuma couldn't, like, Asuma would take damage. But once Shikamaru takes him out of the circle, I don't understand why the other two just kind of... Yeah, why don't they jump in with their Especially because, like, like cause you Asuma's get the part the where... Who, Asuma's the one who does Like, Asuma so. is limping to get up to Hidan to lop, like, to chop his head off. But, like, <laughs> he he was limping. Like, he couldn't use his leg. The other two could have just run up and probably done it in no time flat, but... Yeah, and Hidan's yelling for backup. And, like, because he's like, Kakuzu, you can help me now. And I, um, Kakuzu is like, well, I fucking told you. Like, Kakuzu, man, I didn't realize that before. Kakuzu is a fucking dick, and I love it. He's like, he's just, like, chiding him. Like, I told you to be careful, you fucking dumbass. Like, he doesn't do anything. But he, he just stands back and laughs as he not gets his fucking head cut off pretty much. Like, he doesn't laugh. I th- but... Yeah, I definitely think out of, the, <laughs> what out of the Akatsuki pairs, this one might be my favorite. Like, cause See, with, now, yeah, I, I only just realized that, but I think I agree. Because the thing with, the thing with, like, Datara <laughs> and Sasori is that Sasori just isn't interesting enough. Yeah, I mean, with, I mean, as I think a comment pointed out that I didn't quite realize at first, but, you know, he's a puppet. He's supposed to be emotionless, but that doesn't make him more interesting, I'd say. Like, it makes him more cohesive. Like, I, co- is that the word I want to say? Consistent? It, it makes him more, you know, compact as a character. Like, it fits. It makes sense why he's like that, but it doesn't make him better. Like, even Kakuzu, like, He's he's very stoic, and I'm not like not too huge on stoic characters a lot. I mean, especially in the Akatsuki where there's so there's already Itachi, there's already Sasori, there's already Zetsu, there's already Pain. Like, there's so many. There's already Conan. Well, there's not, there's not already Conan, but eventually there will be Pain and Conan. There's so many stoic characters already. Like Kakuzu is just another one, you know. Like, but at least like he does have little. At least like, with him, he does have those. But, you know, like you said, he's he's a dick at moments. Like he does have those kind of smart ass comments every now and then. <laughs> yeah, he's because he's an old geezer. He remembers fighting the first Okage, you know. And then of course, um, you know, he yeah. So he's got little little moments like that. But uh, you know, overall, he's still very you know stoic. Like I wouldn't see him topping a favorite character favorite characters list because there are so many other characters like him. But he's fine. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely think it's because you know, these I mean, two like when you put these two together that's when they're at their best. Yes. Whereas like with the, with the Sasori Datara thing, I feel like Datara works better alone. Like I think he's a more yeah, or, or at least he's more versatile alone cuz now he's getting this stuff with Toby and he works with Toby too, you know? Like he's uh, honestly he might even work better with Toby than he did with Sasori, you know? Um Though it's hard to consider that quite the same pair because, you know, I feel like it, Didara and Sasori are like the art pair. They, they're, you know, is art eternal? Is art, art, um, you know, tra- uh, what's elusive? Um, what's transient? That was the word I was looking for. Versus, and like what's, Toby is just a dork. Yeah. Like he doesn't have the, the, he doesn't have the Akatsuki duality thing that, uh, it, um, Kishima is trying to do with the other pairs. Not so, yet at least. Um, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did, I did, I did like this moment that I totally forgot about because <laughs> it's a fucking dick. I love it now. Oh man, because yeah, I mean, Hidan's like again. It's like uh, the, I mean, the, even the dynamic isn't that unusual for Naruto. The cold, cool guy like Sasuke or Neji or 
um, you know, Kakuzu versus, and the, the hot-headed guy like, uh, Naruto or Rock Lee or, uh, Hidan. But it's still, you know, just, it, you know, they, it's good. It's still good. It's, it's, it's not a, it's a used, commonly used dynamic for a reason, I'd say. So I'm trying to think if I had anything else to say about the fight. Cause, I, you know, Hidan gets his head cut off and they're like, oh, it's over. And then he's like, well, fucking, <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> like, do you guys know how it feels to have your head sliced off? And <laughs> like, you fuckers. And I did think it was kind, know, of, just, interesting it kind of interesting how fun. he could feel pain, but also just couldn't die. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know if there's something more, like, symbolically going on with him, but... Yeah, they don't really establish into how he's like this. Like, is it is there actually a deity who's, like, maybe the... Is there actually a deity who's um, giving giving him this blessing? Or is it just a technique? Like, you know, which is... They don't need need to, I guess, but, um... I mean... Hmm. Well, I meant more in, like, the context like, of the narrative. Like, like uh, or maybe not the context of the narrative itself, but, like, from, like, Kishimoto's perspective, like, was he trying to... I don't know. Was there supposed to be kind of like a deeper meeting with him or just this pair in general? But I don't know. Maybe yeah, well, and another question I just realized I hadn't thought about before is like immortality is kind of a big deal for Orochimaru. And both of these guys seem to have found methods for immortality that are way easier to pull off than whatever Orochimaru is trying to do. <laughs> like, uh, um, I mean, I guess Orochimaru also gives him new techniques. Though I get Kakuzu kind of like it gives him other elemental releases at least, so it makes it easy him, it easier for him to use those other techniques. But uh, so I don't know. But like I feel like Kakuzu's the like the way to go if you want to become immortal. Just just throwing that out there, Rochi Rochimaru, take notes. Uh-huh. Yeah, that that is an interesting point. Like of course, of all the Akatsuki members he could have targeted, he went after Itachi, and uh, I mean <laughs> that didn't turn out well. Did, did he want the Sharingan <laughs> to copy all of the immortality? things may... i mean that could be it but uh, okay <laughs> yeah maybe well, he just again, underestimated I guess you could also say then, that it, but it then... plays into like his desire to master all jutsu so by having the sharingan then he can do that easier because he can copy everything maybe but then also there's the idea of like right. swapping bodies to preserve his lifespan yeah because so. because if he copied kakuzu's stuff to steal hearts he couldn't get the sharingan from a heart um, so unless having Uchiha DNA sometime, get, no, the eyes are kind of special, so it wouldn't work that way. Though I do, um, um, speaking of Kakuzu, I guess, like, how do you feel about his other abilities? Cause he has like his stretchy, like arms, which is kind of cool. Cause he's like a, he's like a medical ninja, which is, uh, yeah, cause he's got like, and, all those... but, and he fights with like severing his limbs and using wires. And, uh, then of course he's later on, he's got like his own elemental release. Just like, honestly, the elemental stuff, now I think about it, feels kind of tacked on just to sort of like legitimize Kishimoto's introduction of it this arc honestly like just like it doesn't really fit with the medical stuff like why like I guess it fits with the having multiple hearts but that's like did he have to train I don't know it's it's weird because um, like how each each heart has its own uh like uh what is it called the well, yeah the natural chakra releases or like a as, as with the the paper test but which of course that also ha- had was with me and that i was like wait hold on but i guess yeah um, also if you can train more uh, i guess it's fine I, I, I did i already concluded that it was fine Never yeah, mind. so i guess it um <laughs> would have been interesting because like maybe instead of focusing on the legs you know never mind i don't because like nah never mind i'm just gonna i'm just gonna drop it just for a, a, a for <laughs> okay, a, more fine. of a just an interesting thing to point out I liked how uh, one of Asuma's techniques was like the the fire style burning ash, which is just I mean he's the 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 chain smoker, so he's got bad <laughs> lungs, I guess. That's true. I mean I like I think especially like the <laughs> yeah. burning ash. I think that's a that's a cool name, and I like the technique. Like it's just this big infernoy smoke cloud, but I just think it's interesting that that's the character it's attached to. I mean, like, it makes sense, but it's also kind of funny. Oh, yeah, and we do, after, like, after standing around and doing nothing, those two guys actually do do something. Like, one of them summons a big fucking hammer, like, or something, like, with Spike, like, it's a cool-looking hammer. Must have been a pain in the ass to draw, <laughs> but it looks kind of cool. Um, and the other guy makes, like, like uh, the, I mean, it, the syrup water thing, the sticky... Yeah, the water trap to sort of, like, you know, they, which which definitely makes sense as a combo, you know? Just pin him down and fuck him up with a hammer, you know? Giant-ass fucking hammer. It's probably slow to move and unwieldy, so it makes sense to have to pin a guy to use it properly. Yeah. But, you know, it's fine. So we, yeah, we do see see some other abilities. That's that's cool. But then Kakuzu... Um, though, just... I mean, I don't imagine we see a lot of these guys again, but why? maybe, we, maybe we'll be surprised. I think it'd be pretty 
clear why we don't because they get like they don't even <laughs> strike a blow. Kakuzu just catches them, and it's like, oh, okay. That's yeah, exactly. That. <laughs> they get wrecked. They had a, yes. a important role in this fight, and by this point, Shikamaru has like exhausted yep. all of his uh, energy trying to like restrain Hidan. So uh, yes. <laughs> So he can't even do anything, and he's completely helpless as, yeah, Osmo fucking dies. He gets stabbed, and that's it. Like, yeah, or that's not it, but, um... Well, I mean, you get the moment of Karanai watering flowers, and one of the head, the head falls off, and she's like, oh, shit. Uh, uh, another one of uh, Kishimoto's, like, superstitions that he, he loves so much. Or maybe it's not a superstition, but it's definitely, like, a, like, sort of that... Just that same general idea, you know, of, uh, things happening. Like, little things happening that signify something greater i would i guess or um but yeah then they and then backup comes in um with the uh, genjutsu they do exist Genju, genjutsus are real i forgot about genjutsu or maybe it's a genjutsu or maybe this guy just summons a lot of birds all of a sudden the thing with i see i'm not even sure like it feels like a genjutsu because it reminds me of a tachi but then like the, they're the bird we see the birds disappear like as if they were summoned so now i'm confused <laughs> maybe it was genjutsu maybe it was the summoning who knows? Who can say? Uh, yep. That also now kind of begs the question, is all jutsu elemental jutsu? Because then what is summoning? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, uh, I don't know. So anyway, now, oh yeah, oh yeah, one thing I didn't mention earlier, because there was a two-page spread of all the Akatsuki members, and I noticed that uh, Kishimoto finalized all the designs, because you see Conan from, and Payne from behind. Because, um, and from what I remember the, of what we see later, they haven't changed. So, you know, he's, <laughs> they're different from the silhouettes from way back when, but they're, they're still, uh, different. Because I think or they're still, they're, they're, I was gonna say, I think Payne was the only, like, not previously introduced character whose silhouette still, we could tell. Yeah, you yes. could tell it was him. Like, like mainly it's the yeah, eyes, or, but I think his face was also pretty much the same so, yeah, see, one yeah. thing well because one... uh, like especially i remember there was like a guy who was bigger than kisame who we never see and then there's like a a, a fish on the wall <laughs> who i, I <laughs> and i'm just like who the fuck is the fish <laughs> just um yeah but um yeah but now they're finalized so um i mean as ever they're they're gonna keep like dying or getting knocked off but um see wh- one thing that um this is just kind of inherently a thing with shonen shows but i feel like uh or shonen manga in this case but eh, i feel like kishimoto does this pretty well with the idea of like long-term build-up at least for because you the i don't know i think it's because oh hang on i'm going all over the place let me check myself so what i what i realized while i was reading this stretch of chapters just like looking forward to what we have to read next and i'm kind of being reminded that really it's the shinobi war that seems to kind of pull everything down because you've got a lot of like background details being set up like pretty pretty far out in advance or fairly far out in advance like the thing with pain he shows up in uh what was the last chapter of the sasuke retrieval arc it was uh 238 and i think that's when pain first appeared but like he's only like it's only at the end of this arc that he actually like for the first time is on screen shown not in his silhouette and he's not even going to have a role in an arc until the yeah. one following the next uh, one after yes. this. Well, because next is the Itachi uh, pursuit, which is Sasuke getting his boys and fighting Orochimaru, I think. And then after that is after that we finally get introduced to Pain. Though also we get do get introduced to Pain's um like uh, goal finally. Like we finally know what the Akatsuki are up to. So which I want to talk. I'll, I'll talk about. But um. But then there's also. Did you have anything else to mention? Well, there's or, also gone? like you were the still whole going, yeah. um. Because especially looking ahead to some of the well, I get, never mind. I'll talk about those when we actually get to those arcs because that's yeah. Really... I've already made that mistake of trying to look ahead and like realizing I have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, in in this case, but, um, I, do, I do. So I guess oh, but, never mind. Or, or, I was gonna say in this case, I do know okay. what I'm getting to, but it's just more relevant to that okay. discussion. Okay. That's fine. But um, anyway, uh, Osmo's death scene. He gets his like elongated like last words. Um, <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. That he's like, um, Eno, 
don't you ever lose to Sakura in ninjutsu or love. And then, you know, proceeds to lose to Sakura in ninjutsu and love. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I mean, she. I mean, seriously, you know, I mean, Choji doesn't do a lot either, but Ino doesn't, like, uh, Cho- you know, does neither of these two characters do anything. You know, what I just realized, we completely missed <laughs> one arc. of the gags with Sai from earlier when, uh, when, you know, cause oh, yeah. Sai describes Sakura as homely. And then he's like, oh, okay, <laughs> so with women, you you tell them the opposite of what you think, because otherwise they get really mad. <laughs> and so then he's like, oh, hey, beautiful. And then Sakura gets all pissed. Uh, and of course, they fuck later. Um, <laughs> or they get together, as I, I believe. Well, they do, they do um, both. After the series is, or, you know, so... Um, yeah, so so Sakura gets Sasuke, and you know, imitation Sakura gets imitation Sasuke. A match made in hey, heaven. Hey, <laughs> there we go. Everybody happy in the end, <laughs> except. But uh, yeah, so um, I was gonna say except Neji because he dies. <laughs> this is just like a running oh, joke with me now. It's just like any time. It's just if I can take a pot shot at Neji's death, I will do it. <laughs> Oh man, though you reminded me, we still haven't gotten to the the Sakura or Tsunade rants, but I imagine those are to nope, come. Nope, st- so. still coming, not yet. Um, yep, yep, definitely I mean, not in of this course arc not, because, yeah, they because Sakura hasn't done yeah, anything. They don't really do much here. <laughs> didn't do anything. Like yeah, Tsunade sh- keeps showing up, but she's like like you know the character that we were introduced to in the sh- Search for Tsunade arc. She's just kind of like a boss lady now, you know. So that's a little little disappointing. Well, well I do, but, I do uh, like again, that not she's a more but... like a more colorful boss you could say like she's not um like i, I think yeah, with the, the fact with that the third we do know Hokage, had, there was yeah. like he had his own personal quirks but he was much more i think like more of a respectful a typical yeah, like a typical leader, leader whereas like, Tsunade, you have a lot of moments where she's kind of you know she's i mean you said quirks but i'm like what i mean i guess he got mad at naruto uh, sometimes y- y- you until, know like yeah uh, i was thinking like his whole uh, uh yeah the stuff with naruto but i guess that's not really a quirk per se yeah it's just him being like old <laughs> so it's not like the worst. like he's not the worst but he's just kind of like generic i guess i would say like there's nothing really stand out about the third but I, th- I think is, i think Tsunade is actually like out of because even when i i don't know maybe i'd hesitate to say this but like with actually no i can't really say that because he doesn't have a significant role so kage and so never mind forget that but like with Tsunade, <laughs> you have all the moments where she's going against uh the the elder people in the village and then like the last arc and then in this arc uh which you can understand why she's like that because you remember her from the search for sonata arc so she so she does still have some of her character carry over so i i feel like yeah the search for even though we're not getting a whole lot of her like the fact she's it has still had her earlier characterization that, that does carry into some of her choices and decisions that we see so it's not the best like we're not getting a lot of screen time from her understandably but um you know it could be worse could be worse I was going to say something in regards to uh, when Team Shikamaru sets out for, like, their vengeance quest, but now I've forgotten what it is, so maybe when we get okay. there... Well, we're not quite there yet. Maybe, yeah, because... Maybe, um, pop up again. W- before that, we get this... this after uh, Asuma's, like, giving his last words, you know, um, hey, Shikamaru, you're good enough to become Okage. You should do that. And then, Choji, you're, you're a really strong guy. You should be more confident in yourself and be strong. And uh, I already joked about it, you know, but then we get, like, this extended flashback that I'm just like, like, I, I wasn't like mad or frustrated or disappointed. I just, I'm just really not invested in this character. Like, even in these, like, Shikamaru, a lot of people really like Shikamaru. I mean, he's okay, but I'm not, I, I, I don't know. It's like, it's hard for me to feel something for the Naruto characters. Like, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm daring to say that, like, my two favorite characters at this point are like Sai and Sasuke, because, which is funny because everyone hates them, but I'm just like, well, they've given me positive reactions. So, like, Sai, and literally with Sai, it's, like, pretty much that he wasn't a fucking disappointment, or he wasn't a waste of time. Like, he was fine in his arc, so I'm just, like, I'm trying to struggle to think of a character who I like that much from Naruto, and I'm like, shit, I think Sai is one of my favorite characters. Not even Rock Lee. So, I don't know. Lee's yeah, good. I guess the thing I, is Lee, that Lee he would just, be up there, I guess. He's basically but it's like, done now. Like, he had his moment. Yeah, exactly. So, like, tuning Sam's, I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, Lee, and it's like, but now it's like, oh yeah, Lee exists, and, you know, uh, so... You know, Naruto and Gara have would be up there if they were more well executed. It's, they just uh, weren't. So, but yeah, it's like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're getting more Sasuke. Sasuke has more than enough time to sour my opinion on him. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, so, but I don't know. How do you feel about the flashback? Because it just feels like a little too little, too late. Like trying too hard to make me feel. 
See, when I'm already dead inside. See, I had forgotten that the flashback even happens. Like, when you brought it up, I was like, what is he talking about? But you're talking about the thing with, like, the the earrings and, like, we're Team 7 and that stuff, right? Oh, uh, smoke. Oh, your smoke stinging her eyes. And yeah, then, yeah, like, yeah. well, it's like, because right after that, you get, uh, Shikamaru smokes a cigarette. And he's like, uh, the smoke, his smoke's still stinging my eyes and he's crying in the rain. But it's like... This isn't like this isn't like with uh, Sasuke and Itachi with the head tap thing, no, where like it's not. I you get the full page of head tap and you're like then like a million chapters later when uh, Itachi does it on Sasuke after the fight or at the very end of the fight and you're like oh sh- shit, um, but then this is like three pages later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this, uh, Asuma, your smoke stinging my eyes. Then, like five pages later, oh man, it feel, still feels like a smoke. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work. It's too like he's trying to do so much in such a little time. I think that's the problem here. Is that it? May, it like, I, like I guess that's the real problem with death flags. Is that usually they're the result of the author trying too hard to do something that's not like you would have to be like like just really invested in naruto in general to get, feel emotionally affected by this i would say like I, I'm, I'm i mean maybe i'm curious if, if anyone in the comments has said like well i really like the awesome death it really makes me feel and that's fine i'm just like rereading naruto you know knowing awesome dies and not really caring about his character or even Shikamaru. Uh, he's fine. Shikamaru is fine he's one of the better ones. like I'd, I'd maybe give him top 10 like he's one of the notable characters if nothing else you know, but he's not like one of my favorites. So I just, I'm just like, would you call it an issue of like in a more broader sense of poor characterization? Cause I know like one of the big complaints that that I have, and I think a majority of people have with a a story like a comic, a kill is that what they'll do is if a character is going to die, they'll get their backstory right before they die. Like that, happens with almost everybody and it's like oh, it God. basically becomes well, its own see i don't even want to say that's necessarily an awful thing because um in a manga i um B- battle royale was um which i i don't you might have heard the premise of a bunch of high schoolers have forced to kill each other but it was very much the same where a character would get a flashback and then they would die brutally but it kind of like i didn't hate it like i, I even though it was predictable like I, I see now. I want to like re- almost reread it and wonder like, okay, is this doing something well, prob- differently that makes me get involved, like invested in these characters? Like not even invested. Like I don't, I can't tell you any of their names. I just remember like, oh, that there was a flashback and there's a how a character died. But I just remember feeling like every fucking, every fucking, not every fucking time, but too often like I, I get a flashback and then I just remember the fucking pit in my stomach falling out when the character like brutally got murdered. Maybe that maybe it was the brutality that made it work better. So I think part I don't of know. the issue with it is that uh like it would be different possibly if you had like established that character because the thing like with asuma for example he doesn't get a whole lot of screen time before this so we don't really like we can kind of get an idea through his actions like how he is but we don't actually see like he he doesn't get a whole lot of focus and then it's here where it's almost like we're using these flashbacks we're using all of this to kind of facilitate that careness yeah it's kind of, it's retroactive characterization almost like he's trying to i guess i mean i guess if you're talk if you're talking about the scene as like selling the like explaining why choji and ino and shikamaru are feeling so bad you know like this is giving them giving us that connection that we we haven't really seen a whole lot of these characters together like we've only gotten just sort of the bare minimum so if it's like trying to get us to at least understand them that's fine, but I feel like it's trying to get us to connect with them, and that's where it's uh, where it's not working for me, at least. Yeah, so. I, d- I definitely kind of, yeah, I definitely felt the same way. Because I think the difference, not that I like hate this moment or anything, like I get what it's going for, and it's not, it's not like obtrusive. It, it's understandable. It'd be weirder if it didn't happen. Like, like I can say, th- I can say that, you know. But I also don't care. Well, for yeah, it. There, there are certainly worse ways that I've seen this sort of technique integrated. Because, like I said, with the, the, the yeah. The thing with Asuma's death is that it's less, I think, the the death itself that is the driving factor and more so how it will influence the rest of the arc, like how it will affect Shikamaru. Yeah. Like, as I said earlier, Shikamaru is more so the main focus of this arc than Asuma. Whereas, like, yes, if Asuma, fair. I guess, was the linchpin, then it wouldn't really... It would fall... I think it would fall... Uh, fail to deliver on that like it doesn't have i guess the same sense of scale that say a main character would require so because like because it doesn't need to be that impactful it like it 
it inherently can't mm, fail as okay, hard because it doesn't have as high of an expectation to live up to. Yes, like, it's not like, if, if he was killing off, like, Naruto and trying to make me feel and I felt nothing, I would be like, okay, this is a problem. Um, yeah, I, I guess I see what you're saying. So, I mean, obviously that's a bit of an extreme example, but I, yeah, I, I gotcha, I gotcha, I think. Well, okay, well, like, let's say that, um, that it was Shikamaru who was dying here, and, like, he gets a big backstory hmm. beforehand, like... See, and that, well... I mean, part of that might work better because, well, that would be actually, shit, that might even be more interesting because compare, well, because one of the ideas here is the will of fire and, um, or, and as Asuma mentions, like they have the shogi game and, um, they're talking about like, oh, each of the pieces represents part of the village and uh, the Hokage is king. And he's like, no, Hokage is not king. It's something, and he like tells Shikamaru, but we find out what the king is at the end of the arc and the king is the future, the next generation, you know, um, so it would have been tragically interesting if 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 the king in so, so to speak in Shikamaru was killed. Like how it asked like now I'm just imagining Asuma going on this vengeance crusade. Um, but um, the thing is that he's not quite the one to like pull it off. Like the way Shikamaru takes out Hidan is very very Shikamaru. Though um, and what that, we'll talk that about was that the later. part of like that was the element of this arc that I really liked was just the you know kind of, it's a it's a thing that I don't think the great ninja war handled as well was the idea of like the 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 uh, the future the younger people kind of mm, taking the next over generation. that's certainly yeah. a big theme in oh, this yeah, arc guess... because like you have the same thing with kakashi and naruto yeah. like you finally surpassed me. yes I, I was just thinking about that as you're saying that yeah you're right and you're I, right. I do i do yeah, really no, like the that theme like, well, in should... this arc like i think it's one of the strongest points in favor of it yeah and I guess you can also count that, that, I didn't think about this before, but it's also juxtaposed against the Akatsuki, where you have like, especially Kakuzu, who's this old fogey, you know, he's, he's older than like Chiho, and, or from, and from the, uh, Kazakage, Kazakage rescue arc, so he's, the, he's the opposite on the side, you could say, where of like, where his, his thing, he wants to persist, he wants to exist well into the future, even though he's just an old, you know, he, when he, sh- you know, he should be thinking about the legacy through, the next generation, but it, you know, I mean, it's not really deeply commented on, but it, it's just like an, an aspect of his character that's kind of thematically relevant, I would say, and to a lesser extent, Hidan, because Hidan's uh, younger, or yeah. So, but um, yeah, that's, it's a neat idea that def- uh, you know. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's yeah, that's good. And so, or what, what, did you have a point, or beyond that, or did you already say it um, with uh, how you, oh you you'll just like the arc more because of Shikamaru? But yeah, it's like I guess going back to the original question, it's like. I probably would have felt more if Shikamaru died because it would have tragically gone against Asuma's sort of ideology, or like, or not gone against, but like, gone against his hopes, so to speak. So that might have been an interesting way to put it. Like, I mean, I guess that's the kind of the issue with shonen, with or not shonen stories, but just sort of like storytelling in general is sometimes the most interesting thing to happen is the opposite of what happens, but that's why it's interesting to happen. You know, because it, it would go against your expectations, I but think, then things have to happen for a reason. So. I think that's why, like, what if videos or like theory videos are so popular. Cause yes, it's like, how would that have affected the narrative? Or, or especially like it's within superhero comics, you have like alternate universes and uh, like, what if Superman turned evil? You know, like, um, like my favorite um arc in cartoons, uh, one of my favorite arcs period, is in Justice League Unlimited, the Cadmus arc, where sort of like, based on another Justice Episode League, where uh, Superman from an alternate universe went evil when the Flash died and sort of created a tyranny and made Earth peaceful, but um, everyone feared the Justice League, and sort of the the government of the main universe sort of like went, oh shit, these superheroes can fuck us up if they so want to. Uh, we better do something about that, and just, you just get this really interesting conflict, and it was really, it, the Cadmus arc was fucking great. Justice League Unlimited is really good. But, um, you know, just sort of that idea of, you know, what, what could happen, and in that case, what could happen, and how should we react to that possibility um, in-universe? But it was an interesting angle, but um, yeah. So yeah, that is you know, like you said with the uh, fan fiction, what if videos? It's it's definitely intrinsically interesting, but at the same time, like <laughs> there's a reason why hard, why characters work hard, and uh, <laughs> I mean maybe that's why the Sasuke versus Naruto was was good because like I mean narratively, yeah, Sasuke when he makes the most sense, expect especially looking at it from ahead, uh, you know, having known the the fallout and stuff, but like. How would Naruto have gone if Naruto had won? Like that would that have been more interesting? I don't know. Like that's a that's a rare case where where I feel like the the less quote unquote predictable outcome 
happened uh, to a degree. Like it's not it's not like the most like crazy out there. Like I guess that's why people are interested in subversions and uh, deconstructions. Well, and cause stuff. You get, yeah, because like because with that arc in particular, you have this big setup where oh we're going back to save Sasuke, but they they don't like that. That's not what happens because you think the logical or at least like in a conventional I guess sense the logical conclusion to that arc would have been well they want to go out and save sasuke so they go out and save sasuke like that's yeah 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 it's good it's good but um anyway we kind of went on a tangent there so um this this scene i thought was interesting because so after that fight we get we cut back to the akatsuki and they're sealing up the two-tailed beasts that they caught um and pain finally explains like why they're doing what they're doing and I thought this was interesting because I like the way that he sort of takes the setting to the logical c- conclusion in the world building. Like he looks at these these ninja wars and all this like this tenuous piece of of care of people who have to fight to maintain their jobs and their the, the economy, but in a world so this sort of like um, paradox where uh, uh, it's a peaceful world that needs war, uh, you know, and a war that a world that has war, you know, just needs peace. So he's just kind of like, well. The only way to sort of like write the cycle is to um, take over the world and mo- by monopolizing wars and the tailed beasts. And it's like, you know what? That makes sense. And that's the thing I like about world building is when they do go to that, that logical conclusion and sort of like, this, see, this is what Kishimoto should have done with his fighting, so, the, the action and the, the chakra system is take a step back and just sort of like, go like, hmm, what would actually happen in this world I made? And so I actually, this is like one of my favorite um, parts of the arc, honestly, just because, I mean, I this might uh, devolve into a pain rant, depending on how that arc goes. Um, like you've got your Sakura and Tsunade rants, I've got, I might have my pain rant. Um, give give that a couple episodes, but um, yeah, so, I don't know. How did you feel about this part? Like, I mean, I don't like the ending line could have been a little, little less, like world domination because of me. Like that that line could have been a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but I get, I get, I, I get what he's going for, especially knowing his character from later. Like, I know why he's like this, so that I might have, I might not have cared for this moment as much, um, seeing it for the first time. But like seeing it like now, especially with some of my personal thoughts on world building in mind, like you know, I, I do like this part, even if it's, it's just an exposition dump, but it's an interesting one. So, how did you feel? Well, is what I. I was thinking back to one of those interviews that got linked with Kishimoto and uh, especially like how he kind of connects Naruto to in a way connecting it to the other characters well, I was gonna say connect- like Obito or well, no, I was no. going to say connecting the story of Naruto to the real world like how you know mm. he grew up in a time without war whereas the previous generation had experienced you know like the great wars um, so yeah I got so then that. it's I like see. he takes this approach where like um well, you know, basically that everything that you just explained, like, you know, peace, but like war is necessary or I, I've just completely misconstrued well, um, things. Well, there was a, what was the video? What was the video? Oh, it was, um, pause and selects a video. He did a series on the apocalypse in Japanese, uh, yes. manga and anime where, um, and in the last one, he talks about the paradoxical harmony where, you know, a perfect harmony would not have even the, or, you know, peace, so to speak, would not even have like a precaution because a precaution sort of implies that something can go wrong. Like, you can't have a nuclear warhead in a war world of peace because having a nuke means that you might have a reason to use that nuke. Like, having a safety measure, like, um, you know, do this thing so this doesn't blow up. Like, you can't have true peace in a world where you have, like, uh, or at least the, I, the perfect peace in a world that has some sort of, uh, you know, the, the possibility of something going wrong. But if you don't have the possibility of something going wrong, in your mind, then when things do go wrong, it's only worse because of that. And that's um, specifically that's what happened with the 2011 earthquake because the the nuclear reactors, or at least one of them, had a fucking meltdown because of the earthquake because they weren't taking all the. I mean, that, that something went wrong, and before that, there had been peace and relative, you know, and so things got lax, and shit, when shit happened, it got was worse than it should have been because of that paradoxical harmony, so that's sort of the, what's pain, yeah, what I, yeah, what I mentioned in what, the interview, so, go on. Well, yeah, because, like, he has, that, yeah, that's a, that's another good way of putting it, because the idea of controlling all wars so that there will, in theory, be no wars, or I think that's kind of where he was taking that philosophy, but it certainly is an interesting contradiction, although, 
it is kind of weird that um, you say there is that moment where it's like world domination and it seems more, <laughs> maybe it's more That's where like it a, starts to descend a little bit into like a uh, Saturday morning uh, cartoon which, which, cheese. No, I think it's, but again, it's, it's, it's I feel fine. like it's, it's weird though, <laughs> considering Payne's characterization later on that he, that's not the type of character that he is. Yeah. Like, Unless I mean, maybe, like, he's maybe just... you can argue that he's trying to sell it to yeah. these fucking megalomaniac maniac monsters, the Akatsuki. Yeah, that would have been my and He's argument. just sort of like twisting his words to appeal to them. But at this point, it definitely seems a little like, like, I, even I, like, I was like up to the, in this build up monologue, I was like, on Payne's sign, I'm like, Payne did nothing wrong. Um, I'm voting for Payne 2020. Um, but, uh, then he goes, world domination. I'm like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Disregard me. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have anything else to say on that, or were you still saying something and I interrupted? Because I do that. I'm. I. Uh, this is the podcast where I regularly interrupt math whiz all the time with loud noises. <laughs> well, I think that's also kind of a good thing because, like, with me, I have this tendency, which really shows through on hallway chats, where I'll start a thought and go and go and go, and then I forget what my original conclusion was, and I just kind of trail off. So <laughs> I, I, well, I do that too, to be fair. So. But yeah, um, then, then when you cut in, it But on Holy Chats, you also don't say anything sometimes, so maybe it's good to let you speak sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, like when someone when someone just jumps in um, to pick up where I'm kind of trailing off, then it's like, hey, I don't have to finish that thought hmm. now, because... Gotcha, gotcha. Or I can have extra gotcha. time to think of it. So anyway, um, getting back to the Leaf Village, uh, Osmo's dead, uh, there's a there's a funeral. Karanai is sad, because that's all she does this arc, is be sad. Poor Konohamaru, um, he's there again. Like, first he loses his yeah, like, well, granddad, <laughs> then he loses his uncle. Yeah. It's just... Well, I'd forgotten for a moment that he did show up after the time skip, like, with Naruto. So I wanted to make a joke about how, like, the last time we saw him, he was crying at a funeral. And like, here he is again, crying at a funeral, <laughs> but there was that moment in between. But, the, but that's, like, that's like out of his last three appearances, it's like half of them have been crying in funer- at funerals, so... I just thought that was funny. But yeah, so now, oh, didn't you have us say something? You wanted to say something about, um, everyone heading out? Or, cause Team Sh- uh, Shikamaru, or Team Asuma minus Asuma, they're gonna head out on a mission? Or they're, they're, that's, they're gonna go fight the Akatsuki. And did you have something to say about that? Well, or? I, I thought that Tsunade did something interesting at this point, but, like, I guess my, oh. my idea was that she let them go on the mission because Kakashi, you know, joined up with them but yeah kakashi said he was going. i don't know yeah. if that's a particularly well because she was like i mean i guess it's still a su- a sort of tsunade thing that this plan which isn't like i mean shikamaru has thought it through but like it's uh you know not really under her control but she lets it go anyway like when she sends naruto out to the sand village when that's not the smartest idea but she she has her own reasons for doing it and she kind of does it anyway but i don't think that's as prevalent here as i thought it was yeah, I, I kind of see what you're saying, but um, cause, well, I mean, she she harps on the whole four man squad thing, even though with the um Sasuke Ruchiro stuff, she sent a, out a, a five man squad. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's I don't know, it just it feels arbitrary to me the num the, the four man squad thing. Like I get the idea, like. But did they explain exactly why it's four people? Like, is there, like, uh, like five? Here's why you can't have five, and here's why you can't have three. Like, is there something with the positions? Like, because they, they factor into positions anyway. You have a leader, then you have, like, a medical person, and then you have two guys. <laughs> but it's not, like, like usually a, cold, a cool-headed one and a hot-headed one. But that feels like an accident, not, like... Well, yeah, because, like, it like was with different the, when... In, in fact, it in was the, different when it was the, the squad leader and, like, the three kids, because that was obviously, like, a training thing. So you could argue right, but that, th- like, this is a cu- cu- because you could argue yeah. w- beforehand, like the the four man squad was necessary just because you needed that leader. But now it's like, uh, you know, they're not kids anymore. They're uh, supposedly equals, like they're on equal footing now. So it is a yeah, little... and it's not like again, there's not like positions being, you know, within that four man squad being accounted for. Like, I mean, if you and if there are some, they, then they were just coincidentally chosen with from the academy squads. You know, like they, they just happen to have like a girl who may or may not have like, and then, you know, the girl, the cool headed guy and the hot headed guy, like those aren't like ninja squad positions. So that's just tropes. And now I just think yeah, of the just, ninja school it just, seems just like so establishing and these like, okay, that, we're putting these squads together. We got to have, you know, a girl. There's got to be a girl in there. We got to have <laughs> the, the cool guy and we got to have the, the stubborn guy. Then that's only how we'll do squads. Yeah. Go. Yes. Well, and it's it's especially weird with the academy squads because those were decided by grades. So, uh, 
I don't know. It's just, it's just like, like, yeah, it's just, like, I feel like if they're going to do squads, they should have, like, as many as necessary, you know, if it's, if it's, a, cause they have single man operations too, I would imagine, of infiltration and stuff, you can't exactly send a four man squad to all disguise and go into a place, like, I mean, you could, but it's like, I don't know, it's just, just a minor little thing that just slightly irritates me, <laughs> um, actually, noticing something as I'm looking through is that, um, because, okay, they do the sealing ritual, and they have six. So I guess they must have picked up a a, a, th- a third one before the two tails and the three tails. Because they had, I think they had, they had two, and then they got Gara. So then they must have gotten someone else, and then they got the two and the three tailed ones. So then they have see, six, I, which means they're missing Naruto, Killer B, and someone else, see, I think. See, I or just couldn't remember if thing. they had said that they captured two or three before they got Gara. I had just forgotten that detail. Yeah, I don't remember, so... But, I mean, I do I do still feel as though, like, they just they just got... Um, th- I feel like they've just gotten a lot more since starting the time skip than they did through the time skip. Like, I swear it was two and then Gara, so it was three total, and then they've gotten three since then, so it's like their work output has increased significantly um, since since it become it came, became important for them to be getting the the uh, uh, the tail beasts. So <laughs> just a just a minor little jab, I suppose. Well, that's because I know like bef- beforehand, like they needed to they needed like to to prepare. They needed to all that time to make the like to get everything together. I guess so. Now it makes sense that they're being more productive. I guess. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Um, anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, the Tsunade make, talks with uh, Sakura a bit, and they make a plan that for um, Naruto, if Naruto gets his jutsu done in time, they can go. If not, someone else will go. I also like this cover spread of like older Naruto and younger Naruto. Um, did you, see, you know, um, for chapter the one three where and thirty-two, where they're just height. like, yes, yeah, and then they're like doing like a little high five kind of deal. Just I don't know, kind of neat to see them. How like Naruto has gotten taller, like way taller, like or just and this is like our first time seeing younger Naruto in a little while, so it was just kind of neat. Just wanted thought I'd point that out. Um, okay, so then we get a uh, first contact or wait, yeah, where um yeah, Shikamaru's team they meet Hidan and Kakuzu, and we get some fighting, I guess. But the hmm, the fight gets broken up a bit, so I'm trying to think of like how should we discuss this. Oh no! Yeah, this is okay. Yeah, this is the first part of the fight. This is the uh, Kakashi and Team Kakashi versus, or Kakashi and on, on Team Hasuma. What I thought was against the, so yeah. What, for this like first on. little part of the fight, I I love how they're like all set up in like different locations and like they kind of individually reveal themselves. But Eno just does nothing. No, I have another point thing uh, to get to that later. But yeah, she's she definitely does nothing. Though you do get like Kakashi comes in with a lightning blade and pierces one Doesn't of the uh, that panel look... hearts, and we start getting into. Well, the... I mean, this is more for me because, like, I I don't. Well, just with regards to the end of the series, this panel looks very familiar to one of the most infamous moments in Naruto history. So, <laughs> I... are you talking about the or the panel you're talking about here? Or are you talking about the one with Kakashi behind? Yeah, the Kakuzu one. Yeah, the one that big like him? that big spread. Or. Uh... Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the one, the one where Kakashi stabs him with a lightning blade. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um. So, but I don't, I don't know the one from later. So, but uh, hmm. <laughs> now, now I'm curious. But I, you don't have to tell me. Um. But yeah. So they, but yeah. Well, the thi- yeah, they fight a bit, and we, yeah, we see Kakuzu's powers. He's got his uh, his heart elemental hearts, and uh, they, they, they do things, and everyone's like, oh, he's doing the thing. But um, you know, I guess see, they're they're kind of impressing on the importance of elements, but it only really matters. When you have a guy who can do more than one elements, element, but then you, especially like at this point, like Kakashi can do, you know, he, uh, or he's mentioned that Joni can usually do two or three, though Kakashi uses kind of everything because he can copy techniques. So, okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't really do it a lot. Like he did water style stuff back with Zabuza, but he really hasn't done it since. The big, like, I remember, uh, when I was first watching this in the anime, uh, this first moment where Kakashi, you know, he jumps out at Kakuzu and stabs him with the lightning blade. I remember being really impressed by that moment just because I had thought at the time, like, oh, shit, like, Kakuzu just died. Like, Naruto, like, this story yeah. doesn't do that. <laughs> like, like this story never subverts expectations like that. Like, we get big build up for a guy and boom, he's just dead. One shot. And I was impressed by that. I was like, wow, to think that Kishimoto would actually, you know, uh, set up this expectation and just completely blow it out of the water like this. I 
really liked it, and then right. he's not... which goes back to what we were talking about earlier with subversion of expectation, and what if... And then, of course, and then you'd, like, watch the next episode, and you're like, yeah, oh. Yeah, I remember, like, when I oh. when I first watched it, that, that really got to me. Like, I hated... I, for a while, I hated this arc just because of that moment. Like, I hated Kakuzu, I hated his abilities, I hated everything. So I was like, no, you had, you struck gold. You felt betrayed. You struck gold with this lightning blade moment, and he's not actually dead, because he's got multiple hearts. And I was like, ah. Which, I mean, like. <laughs> you should have the younger you was a fool. Now I, I still. You were tricked s- by your own I self. I still see <laughs> the potential, like, of that, like. I don't know if it would have worked here because obviously there's a lot of story beats that have well, to get hit. So you kind of it would have need... been super anticlimactic. Exactly, it would have it would have cut off that climax because you know Naruto comes in, he's like, "Oh, I don't get to do anything," and then everyone gangs up on Hidan and he gets taken out even you know easier. And it's like, uh, yeah, but I, I can definitely see how that moment would have affected you, and it would it would be nice to see more of that every so it's often. Not, but like, I mean, in this not, specific instance, I don't think it would have worked. Thing though, like I think just in. I won't say all narratives, but Shonen typically has that issue where, like, you know that you're going to get a big climactic battle, which I do think is a big appeal of the genre, but every now and then it would be nice to get these little moments where, like, except to have them actually, have that actually be the kill, where it's just like, oh, out of nowhere, yeah, where you're you, dead. Yeah, where, where a character gets built up and then, boom, defeated, you know, like, yeah, that, that, like, that would it, be it nice doesn't, to see It doesn't work often. with this arc, I understand that now, which I didn't yes. get, you know three years ago but yeah like it would <laughs> well you ha- you seeing the, set that scene and interpreting the way you did you you build up this expectation and then you had that expectation that you probably shouldn't have had in the first place like dash and you felt yeah. you know betrayed i suppose so that's fair uh, at least i can understand why you felt like that way but that was um, more like just my misinterpretation you know, but, yes and but also your misinterpretation being a bit more interesting as an idea of, you know, like I said, something we would like to see a bit more of every, I mean, not too much of, because too much of it, it just gets like, you, you, oh, uh, this character, I, bet, I wonder how he's going to die all this. Like, uh, The Walking Dead might be a series where that doesn't, doesn't work, where it just start, starts happening so much. And I mean, I never watched a TV series, so I'm just sort of exp- extrapolating. But, um, I do know that, like, there's like, what, 15 seasons of that shit? And it's still going, and they still have to keep ca- killing off characters and introducing characters, and to keep. It, otherwise, it, no one dies. But like, that's the point. You're here to watch these fuckers die. So like, for, for <laughs> no. me, it's like, it's, there a, are, it's a hard line. There are watch. a couple of like shonen moments I can think of, which they they don't quite carry the same level of impact as like this moment here potentially could, where they're just like dead, like they're just done. But like in um. For, to not bring up Hunter Hunter again, because I could easily go that route as well. Uh, <laughs> we don't know anything else. In, in My Hero Academia, um, the whole character <laughs> Stain, like he seems like he's going to be this big antagonist, but his arc really only lasts. I saw the anime, but it, it would be the same with the manga, where a couple of episodes, a couple of chapters. And then he's kind of yeah, done, uh, it, which is interesting. Yeah, well, because speaking from what I remember from the manga, because I read farther than season two goes, I'm not cut up. I'm I'm quite a bit behind, actually, like almost a year behind. But Stain hasn't been, like, come up, uh, at least him personally, he hasn't come up. Like, I don't, maybe he was mentioned, but I don't remember him majorly. He, he, you know, he's so, like, if you have this idea of him being a big antagonist, and then he's, oops, he's in jail, and that's it. That's the end. Like, that, you yeah, know, that would be sort of the, the subversion of expectation you kind of might want, you know, or, or be surprised by, you know? So, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But, is, but I, think. I mean, like, now in, in the present day, I don't have nearly as much of a problem with this. Well, I don't even know if I have a problem with it at all now, um, just, like, the way it happens. Yeah, like, I mean, well, speaking, looking back to the Osma death, it's like, you know, that moment didn't work for me as, like, feeling sad for a character dying. And even, it did, like, you know, it, but I, I, I wasn't, like you know like i might have wasn't like disappointed with it like uh, just i don't know it's like we're easy we're we're more able to ex- like i mean okay we have our moments where i was like earlier i was bitching about like well this elemental stuff doesn't come in later even though i don't i'm not sure if it actually does come in later or not so um but at, uh, in other instances like i guess this one we're more able to accept like the series doing its thing you know like i don't know i feel like like if you're the type of person who gets like frustrated with like like genre conventions then, you just wouldn't like then the genre. especially yeah, it's exactly, especially with shonen, because shonen is a lot of people's entry level. So I feel like people get jaded towards it really quickly because they just like, oh, they're 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 so used to the tropes and stuff like that. But then they then they sort of throw out the baby with the bathwater and think that the whole genre is trash. When you know we both like a lot of the like the 
things that intrinsically come with the genre, especially the ones that you can't really get anywhere else. So, like, I, like I just you know, said, like that's and that's kind of like what we're doing whole, here with the end show. The whole uh, pain buildup, where you have like a solid hundred chapters between like his first, um, like the first appearance he makes, and like when he actually becomes relevant, which is it's cool. You, you what character keep... again? I didn't hear because of Discord. Oh, um, or what character pain. again? Pain. You know the guy I talked about earlier, the guy with the Renegon. No, because Discord, Discord, pain. Okay, Discord kept cutting out. Uh, <laughs> but until you said Renegon, I didn't know who you were talking about. It. Okay, so yeah, pain. You're yeah. We see him at the at, at the end, of, very end of part one, and then now we're getting his motivations. And then if in um next episode, actually, the Nen show, we're gonna we're gonna do the the we're gonna do the Sasuke um versus Orochimaru stuff, and then we're gonna get into Jiraiya where we finally start learning about pain. So yeah, we, that's that's like a fairly long stretch of time. So yeah, but like yeah, you, go ju- on, you go just on. now that I know you who's just talking cannot about, you get that with uh, like, are you gonna get that in a twelve episode anime series? No, it's just not. It's physically impossible because no, the runtime even, isn't even that exactly. long. Exactly. Yes, like they like what are they gonna do? Introduce the antagonist in the second episode and be like, uh, in less sex now, next episode. Oh, looks, uh, they were secretly antagonist the whole. Like, no, it still doesn't have that sort of like weight that you get with this sort of long term payoff because because a long term payoff requires a long term, and we're still getting that. Like, even knowing the series, you know, like there's so many chapters in between that the things happening that even if you read it all at once, there'd still be that degree of payoff, you know. So a lesser degree reading it marathoning than, than you would get weekly, of course, but still a degree of payoff, you know, because you can watch a 12 episode anime in one day, but it, it would be hard pressed to read like what we're on volume 37. Good fucking luck reading 37 volumes in Naruto in one day. And even then you're still not getting the whole pain experience. I mean, maybe what if you started from like part one, but still, um, I forget what we were talking about. We somehow got there from the thing about, uh, Kakuzu being stabbed. Yes, right, right, right. So, um, I guess if we're done with that, or... Yeah, I'm done. Sure, okay, we're done. All right, and then, um, so one thing I wanted to point out, because you just mentioned Eno not doing anything. There was a scene where Kakuzu shows off his stuff, and Hidon's right there, and then Eno's like, I can, I've got most of my chakra. Um, I can, I know, I'm not, and I'm not good at battles. I can use my mind transfer technique, and Shikamaru's like, no, don't. Stop trying to be useful, <laughs> you silly woman. This is Naruto. Women aren't useful. And, you know, like, just looks, like, really sad. Like, <laughs> I mean, of course, Shikamaru really had logical deductions. I mean, now that I've been thinking about it, Shikamaru's supposed to be sexist. So, like, <laughs> he's, like, is he coming up with reasons? Like, are his reasons logical? Or is he just, like, trying to justify his... <laughs> no, I, I, I'm the going too far into meanings. it. But I just thought, like, because I've actually seen an edit of these four panels... That changes dialogue to be more like what I was saying earlier of him just being like, women, trying to be useful in Naruto. <laughs> How silly. Like, <laughs> maybe if, if I find out, I put it on screen, because I'm I'm aware of these old Naruto memes of manga edit panels, like uh, the Sasuke one from before. But it's like, it's also like, because yeah, she does nothing in this arc, and here she is trying, she's like, I can do something, and Shikamaru's like, no. And it's like, well, it's again, what you were saying earlier, of bringing up something and then not following up on it like bringing up something to explain why you're not following up on it it's just kind of like disappointing because like again with naruto's questions about like well how did genjutsu work and uh well you wouldn't understand it so i'm not going to talk about it so fuck you naruto like just uh, why bring Ino along like i guess because asuma and she wants to avenge asuma but then she doesn't do shit so it's like choji doesn't even do shit i mean he he does gets, get some attacks off i guess but <sighs> i mean i'm not shouldn't be surprised that Ino isn't doing anything that's just normal but like come on throw kishimoto is very bad at throwing bones <laughs> you can- give her a fucking bone let her avenge asuma like she fucking wants to give her let her do something i mean again choji doesn't get to do a lot either but <sighs> now i'm just thinking we kept Moving choji on. alive for this the- exactly <laughs> right oh yeah there th- okay this was the best part about the fight um like i, I did forget about this where they um they get Kakuzu's blood, and um, Shikamaru uses that as like a fake out. Like uh, uh, Hidon thinks he's slashed uh, Shikamaru, and he's like licks the blood, and then he he stabs himself, and it's like oh, and he thinks like he's like oh man, I got you, Shikamaru, you're fucking dead. And Kakuzu's like ways away, and he's like oh shit, what the fuck did it just happened? Um, that was cool. Or no, Kakashi got the blood, and yeah, that was cool. That was probably the, honestly the best little moment of these fights. I think these fights. Um, just because I love the little 
like mind games stuff and the tricks and the this is this you know this is one of the things that happens in Naruto that I might not expect from a more straightforward or, or a series with straightforward characters like people say like oh they're they're ninjas but they don't sneak around and they wear brightly colored orange jumpsuits <laughs> and again you know I'm saying I'm fine with that like it's like it's an action series it's not pretending it's using the the ninjas as like because ninjas are cool and jutsus it's it's a flavor thing but then you do get these little deceptive moments of tricks and stuff that are cool <laughs> and i like this one because i i didn't see it coming i'm like oh that makes sense it makes sense why they they know his abilities you know they know so it would make sense that they try to do this this trick and shigamaru stays he doesn't like he acts like he's dead to and he gets a a, a attack off on hidan so it's, it's neat um so yeah I, I like it it's cool and i also I, like it's also um I mean, Shikamaru does play dead too, which is, I mean, I don't know. It's just a good setup to what happened. Um, yeah, I would say it's a good setup to what happens later, but also you have, I just think it, it, like the whole, uh, the big trap that Shikamaru sets up for him, where he's got like all the bombs all over the forest. Like, this is just yeah. one of those moments in Naruto where, it, for me, it's one of the most iconic. I mean, Shikamaru is not really okay. a main character, well, uh- but this is the. I think this is... I think this is the scene everyone remembers him for. Well, yeah, definitely. Honestly. I think this is and one I'll, of... I have some things to say about this when scene. It, when it comes down but, to, um... I guess, uh, like, support characters getting a big, like, a big shining moment in Naruto, this is probably the biggest. This is Shikamaru's, like, Rock Lee versus Gara. Yeah, this is Shikamaru's Rock Lee versus Gara. I'd say, where it's just like, his one awesome moment that everyone fucking remembers as being awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I can see that. See, but, and, um... and I know that some people, when they address this arc... Um, they think of it as like, oh, this was Shikamaru's arc. This was the big, you know, we, we got the whole revenge quest going on with Shikamaru, so it should be... And he, he he's like the only, like, yeah, I think, now that I think about it, like, uh, no one else really attacks, or, I mean, he, he takes Hidon away and single-handedly, like, take get, disposes of him as a chunin. Like, Naruto fights Kakuzu, but, Ka- like, Kakashi had already done, like, half the work for him, you know? Um... So it's less impressive. Wait, isn't Shikamaru you know, with Jonin? When, I mean, Naruto point? does. Or who? What about? Or wait, who? Jonin? Isn't who's Shikamaru Jonin? with Jonin or, at this point? Wasn't that a. Did he get, did he yeah, get promoted? Because well, he, 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 he would have gotten promoted like this arc because he was still. A ch- the only Jonin uh, mentioned were um, uh, Neji. Oh, and, okay. Never mind. Then. Oh, uh, Tamari and uh, Kankuro with uh, Gara being Kazakage. The, Sh- Sh- Shikamaru was still oh, a tuning. Oh, I guess I had just back, assumed uh, because the, he was like commanding or he was like pulling the strings with the tuning exam. I guess I just kind of thought that he was above, but I guess not. I was probably just wrong then. I, I, I'm pretty sure he was still mentioned as being a tuning, but um, maybe I'm misremembering, but I see, that's how I seem to remember it. I, I just remember there were the three Jonin with the two sand ninjas and Neji and then Gara that and everyone else was tuned in except Naruto who still but a, a big but what what I was <laughs> um, trying to get to is that a big complaint with this arc like cuz it's all about uh Shikamaru and his team and it's like they're avenging Asuma but really uh, well then the complaint is that well then Naruto just comes in and takes the day there's even a a panel where Naruto uh... says uh this is my show now and it's like oh okay <laughs> yes. um but yeah. like, well, I wouldn't see. I, 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 I not like. I might gone. have initially agreed with that criticism at one point, uh, but then again, I was also partially biased but with it, you the don't. Uh, <laughs> the whole Kakuzu thing when I first watched it. Oh yeah, the <laughs> disappointment. But yes. um, well, because I mean, probably mm-hmm. to you know, rain on your or not rain on your parade, but uh, steal your thunder is uh, all, all these weather references, huh? Elemental references <laughs> too. <laughs> but um, because I yeah, I disagree with that because like Kakuzu doesn't have the same context exactly. there that Hidan does you know so it's like Naruto coming in to kill Kakuzu that like Kakuzu didn't do shit like on purpose like he just kind of interrupted them a bit but it was Hidan who killed Asuma so it makes sense that Shikamaru is the one who kills Hidan or you know what happens but um yeah so like yeah I don't really like how do you feel did you agree well or... yeah because yeah because what I was gonna say was that when Naruto like, jumps in and yeah he does get the the last kill in the arc, but Hidan was the one who needed, like, Hidan was the murderer, he was the, the one who would, I guess, fulfill the, like, Shikamaru killing him would fulfill the vengeance idea, so, I, the, the notion, the notion that Naruto comes in and interrupts this big vengeance quest, like, the big theme of the arc, or not, maybe not the theme, but the big yeah, conflict of the arc, I, I can't really agree with that, because, like we said, Kak- yeah. Kakuzu was not really, uh, the central focus, which I think, and I think I mean, that is its own Nor- problem Nor- in and of gone. itself that, uh, really 
up to this point, Hidan was the central focus and, and Kakuzu was standing on the sidelines. But then he ends up being like the big boss of this arc. And I just don't think. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that. Like, really, I mean, the only reason that's the case is because that's the thing that happens last. And there is a, there, there, there's a few chapters of fighting between Shikamaru taking out Hidan and Kakuzu being defeated. So I guess I can see where that complaint came from. Like, I guess if he wanted, like, see, this would have been a nice opportunity for Kishimoto to do what he's tried to do earlier and sort of juggle plot lines and have two climaxes at the same time. Like, he really fucked that up back yeah. in, in the tuning exams with the third Okage and Gara uh, versus Orochimaru and Gara versus Naruto. Like, that was an example of him trying to do something and fucking up. This is him not trying to do that when him doing it would have been better. If, he, if Hidan and Kakuzu were killed at roughly the same time, it would have been perfect, and I don't think that complaint would have That's happened. That's the big know? issue so, that I was thinking what, of what? then. Like, I hadn't put two and yes. two together, but now that you've said that, I like everything fits into place. Because yeah. cause there's just not enough with, with Kakuzu. He doesn't... Like, his character... Right. Like, like, he, he's he got has his, his little like, he dickish does, moments. The but... only thing I can give Naruto is that Naruto killing a member of the Akatsuki... Like, actually, this is the first Akatsuki member he's beaten, isn't it? Uh, yes, because it was... Uh, yeah, he didn't do he did, he helped against D- D- Didara, but he, D- Didara kind of the Didara clone kind of killed itself. So and uh, you know Sasori was killed by uh, Chio and Sakura. So but with so yeah so you could say that this is Naruto like Naruto as a Jinchuriki fighting back against the Akatsuki, and this is also doing what Orochimaru wanted him to do. But that's very like loose. Like he could have killed any member of the Akatsuki and still done that. And his victory against Pain was more meaningful i guess like i, I want to be hesitant with because I, I still need to reread that arc but um but what you also get here um the reason why like why naruto is so adamant about fighting on his own is that like this is for him a way to prove to himself that he can stand on equal footing with sasuke because if he can't beat a member of the akatsuki on his own then he will never or maybe not yes. never but like he then he's still no match for sasuke like he needs to prove to himself that you know, he can, he can still, like, he can... Yeah. So I guess the issue, the, another kind of issue with also the splitting up of the climaxes and having, you know, Hidan get killed, like, chapters before Kakuzu, um, I mean, I keep saying killed, like, he, he's, he's dead to the story, okay? It's fine to say killed. Like, I know he's not technically not dead, but he's dead to the story, so I'm just gonna keep saying killed just for the ease of it. But it's like, um, shit, and now that I went on that tangent to protect myself, but I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> oh, uh, is that, like, uh, Naruto... Like, the emotional weight of the arc is on Shikamaru, and so Naruto sort of s- stealing that thunder in the end, I guess, you know, kind of, by, with the, like, there's, the emotion qu- isn't quite there. Like, you know, yeah, he is proving himself, like, oh, I'm, I'm getting closer to Sasuke's level, but it's like, how does Kakuza reflect that? He really doesn't. He's just a, he's just a Akatsuki guy, you know? So, yeah, I guess I can see that, but it, it, I'm still fine with it. But I do, I do think it could have been better. Yeah, like again, honestly, with that sort of mixing your of the your idea of like paralleling the climaxes would have been perfect here because you could have had like side by side Naruto having his you know big moment where he like he gets his I don't know if he had a specific one liner or whatnot, but with Shikamaru he's got this this badass like final statement yes. <laughs> your god it, right now isn't that stupid lord joshin it's me and i'm passing judgment on you it's just ah dude like see like i mean because okay to finally talk about what i want to say like I, i'm not as big on the trap because I, it just feels a little like like shikamaru runs away and hidan gets caught in the trap and the trap the trap like he buries it. like the actual method is pretty cool but like it's not really a f- fight like it, it, it sort of falls into the same problem with tamari like a lot of people like shikamaru because he's so smart and logical but i he, he he's never like there's no back and forth and the one time there was a back and forth he gets saved by tamari so it's like I, i'm not too big on any of shikamaru's fights really like even though a lot of people really like them like you know this is it, he just like I, he digs a hole and he lures he to the hole and he puts he in the hole like that's it like, what's the, like, the, but the actual, like, banter and the, like, the part you mentioned of, like, oh, I'm your god now, bitch. Like, oh, yeah. damn. And then Hidan's response is, like, I don't care that I'm just a fucking head. I will fucking chew you to fucking pee. Like, he's, I will dig myself. Like, it's so, they're, they're fucking, like, bad. It is badass. And, like, both of them, honestly. I do love that. But it just, just the actual, like, and, and Hidan's fate is pretty fucking gruesome because he's immortal. He can't die. So, uh, bury him alive in a place where he will never be found. Like, he's, this is something I've seen, like, Judge's Bizarre Adventures has done this, like, twice. But it's still, still a pretty horrifying fate. So, um, you know, I like, 
these aspects, I just, you know, it would have been nicer to have it, like, I mean, but I guess if you had a, like, more drawn-out fight, then Shikamaru is not that strong a character, you know, he's, like, it's, he's, he works with his mind, so it's like, this is the only way it could have gone, but it's not fully satisfying to me, I guess, because I'm a pedantic little dick, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. How did you feel about the, the actual, like, the trap, I mean, uh, so to speak? Like, do you agree? The thing or? that kind of got me was, like, I don't recall Shikamaru like getting a whole lot of distance from when like the explosions go off. So like you have all these bombs strapped to Hidan and Shikamaru is basically oh, yeah. standing like right in front of him, but doesn't like, Oh yeah, that's right. These bombs tear Hidan to pieces and Shikamaru's like, he's a few feet away. He should have been, this should have been a way bigger explosion, I guess is what uh, the issue is. Cause there's so many fucking tags there. He's got like dozens of explosive tags like on his body so and shikamaru it just it makes such a small explosion when, when i you mean consider i'm sure that. you could argue so like, i didn't think about uh, that uh uh ninjutsu uh barriered uh, <laughs> uh um like blocked it in so it all focused on Hidan. um but like <laughs> sure it just okay. it feels a little weird well in that case he should have been disintegrated instead of torn apart so uh, <laughs> like you yeah. could have achieved this effect with way less tags like the tags make it more impactful but then it's not quite delivered on now see so. that would like this really has no yeah. impact on the narrative it's it, it'd be a weaker way to do it that way but like if he was disintegrated ha- like, and he's still immortal so like what would happen that's oh yeah like how much pain is this dude in right now like his body was blown to pieces like just getting his head cut off was bad enough but now like he's been torn to bits like does it all hurt does his whole body is just in constant pain like if so like he's a badass for being able to speak in that state um but um so yeah, it's like it's just a just like little problems sort of building up to certain. I, do they take away from it? Like I still think this moment is pretty cool, but it's just like it's I don't know. It's when people say like, "Oh, Shikamaru is the best character in Naruto because he's so smart," and then uh... I just like I don't know, luring a guy to a hole is not like I guess he's really I mean, like it's not the most it's not exactly tactical genius like a more impressive moment of him being smart would have been like I like the way he sort of made up the marching order in the Sasuke Retrieval arc where he, he cobbles together this team and he and he comes up with reasonable deductions as to why everyone's in the position they are in the order and I'm like that's cool you know Shikamaru has to be in the center because he has to be able to communicate with both sides and Edge is in the back because um he can see behind him the most easily you know it's, it's keep us in the front because he can, it was cool <laughs> you know that was a smarter thing you know but then this is just like anyone yeah, can come most up with of it idea, is just but, like and... <laughs> it's just good preparation on his part but it's not necessarily exactly it's 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 just prep it's time. not like it's batman uh... he's batman but even then it's like it's not like a like, the, the smarter direction of his was hit, figuring out Hidan's abilities with the, the magic yeah. circle and get, gotta get you out of the circle. Like, that was fine. But, like, this was just, like, this is his moment and it's just, you know, it's fine. But it's, and the, the baddest stuff is not, the, the fight part is, is lacking. But everything else, like, the emotions of Shikamaru being badass and, you know, like, I mean, I guess I wasn't like, oh god, he avenged Asuma. I'm feeling emotions now. Like, no, I wasn't feeling that. But the actual, it's, it's cool. It, I, I will not deny that this is a badass moment. I mean, you moment. do get a, pr- um, that's, that's, it's, it's a great moment. And that was the cool, one of the cooler parts of the arc. You know, I just, again, it's like, it, it, it could have been better. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe. It would have been harder to write, I guess, with Shikamaru going toe to toe with Akatsuki for any length of time. And I mean, we, Hidan doesn't, he's a one trick pony, I guess. So how do you write a fight with a one trick pony? More than once. I guess that's the other issue. So, I guess I would say that Kishimoto wrote himself into a corner here, and he did the best he could, you know? And he pulled some cool things out of the best he could, you know? So, I'll give him that. I'll definitely I give him the, that. I thought the so. moment where, um, like, where Shikamaru throws Asuma's lighter onto the the thing, and that's what activates it, I thought that was, like, another one of those... That was good, yes. And then you have the little, like, ghost of Asuma kind of, like, um, I bequeath my will my of fire will to of you. Like, fire. just sort of, like, sort of... Boom. Ash- <laughs> yes, so that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, this moment was about as good as it could have been. I just wish it could have been yeah, better. Like when you like, compare this, like <laughs> this I'm is saying. Shikamaru's big moment. But like, how would you say, like comparing it to the thing hmm. with Rock Lee? It's different because he's not supposed to be tactical. That one's just pure emotion, and that's why it works so well. Yeah, so it's easier to to sort of go like to write. I guess I would say because he's not because Kishimoto even mentioned in an interview that he had trouble writing Shikamaru like before. I thought he was writing Shikamaru pretty well. Like this, mo- this arc, I definitely start to see the the seams kind of where I'm, where you can tell that Kishimaru isn't quite as intelligent as Shikamaru, and he's trying to like make Shikamaru come off as really smart, but he's not like 
he's not quite selling it. You know, I could start to see, that's what I'm starting to see this arc, you know, where, but, um, you know, which it's kind of like, uh, you can't help that. But, um, but I guess like to compare it to Rockley versus Gar, like, you know, Rockley versus Gar delivers more because what he's delivering on is easier, I think. And he does, but he delivers on really, really well. So with this arc, he's trying to do something a bit above his pay grade, like slightly, but it's, uh, so it doesn't quite work as well as it should, but it's still pretty good. It's still pretty damn good, you know? So I, I would say I like Rockley versus Gara more, but, um, this is still a pretty strong moment. Like, I guess I can see why people who like Shikamaru like this moment, you know, cause it is really badass, but, um, yeah. I don't think I have much more to say on this scene, though. Did you have any other? No, that that's basically it for Shikamaru. You do have uh, Sakura and Sai when they show up. They're like, oh, go help Shikamaru. And then they show up and they're like, oh, it's over. <laughs> yeah, you guys ha- aren't doing anything in this arc, so why don't you guys go do something? <laughs> and then, <laughs> nope. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, I, I guess now to talk about Naruto versus Kakuzu, which is, I, I, I mean, it doesn't, like, I wonder if maybe part of the, you know, displeasure towards the arc is because the fight like isn't that it's, good it's kind of just two <laughs> exchanges like you get the it's actually the the fake out ross and Cherokin, which i guess is <sighs> okay i gotta i gotta bitch about something else because i outright just don't understand how naruto won okay because okay so they he tries to use the ross and Cherokin. And they say, oh, it only works about half the time, and it fails the first time. Like, it fizzles out, because like, you can only do it for, like, a limited amount of time. Okay, so then, you know, he rushes, he just, he does the, he, you know, goes at Kakuzu, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, or he, like, goes behind him, I think. And then, and Kakuzu's like, I gotta pay attention to the one that has the shuriken, because otherwise, if he, if it hits me, I'm gonna fucking die. Okay, so here's what Naruto does. He makes a bunch of clones. He does the Rustin shuriken. Um... Kakuzu is paying attention to the clone that has the Rust and Shuriken. He attacks the one with the Rust and Shuriken. It vanishes. It wasn't actually the one with the Rust and Shuriken, even though it was clearly holding the Rust and Shuriken. And Naruto appears behind Kakuzu. Somehow, he's got another Rust and Shuriken. What? what? Like, wh- explain to me what's happening here. Like, uh, did he make another Rust and Shuriken? Did, wh- you see, now I'm thinking, was I, there a comment made by somebody saying that he summoned it three times? Because I remember a comment from Yamato saying, like, oh, he could only do it twice in training, but is that what they meant? Mm, did, but did he, like, did he do it three times? Like, I mean, hold on, I'm trying to find that comment, but, um, it's already passed. Like, maybe, because I, I think I, maybe I thought that he only did it twice in the, like, it's just, uh, it feels weird to me that he's doing it, so, like, but how many clones did he make? Like, did he make enough clones to do that? Like, did he make, uh... Like... Okay, because... Because I don't think he has enough spare clones to do a third Ross and Shuriken. Like, he, yeah, he only has two other clones. How did he do the Ross and Shuriken with just maybe three Naruto's? He, he needs four. Because he needs... He, or He needs one to sort of, sort of, like, be as the base, and then one to... Well, you know, one for the spinning, one for the, you know, uh, or the the force, and one for the... Or I, something like that. He, or he needed three to do the Ross and Shuriken, or the regular Ross and Gun, and now he needs four... For the... <sighs> I was about to say that, like, maybe he had some clones hidden behind trees or whatever, but now that I think about it, Naruto has done sneaky stuff like this in the past, but he just outright tells us what happened. So, like, if that's what he did, he would have said but something. But he doesn't explain. Yeah, it, 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 feels just, it feels very, like, I feel like K- Kishimoto just had no fucking clue how to actually have Naruto win. But he had to have Naruto win, so it just kind of like bullshits it. Like that's how, that, I, I, I'm having trouble seeing it as anything but that because it's just so like, you know, like if he had an extra clone in Kakuzu, like if he, even if he made f- an, one extra clone and was like faking out, like um, he, doing the Rasengan with five instead of four, and then he has the four split off and have them do the real Rasen Shuriken, then that would have been better. Like because Kakuzu doesn't quite no but it's just the way it, it plays out it's just like kakuzu is doing the right thing and naruto just bullshitted away the victory that's how it comes off to me so like so with that in mind like i could totally see why people like feel like like because this is a big climax and then after shikamaru's like emotional victory with asuma and hiran that's much more cool then you have this like bullshit and you're like oh what the fuck why did the, why did the arc end on this note <laughs> is what i'm trying to say so like it's not enough to like ruin the arc or that previous moment for me, but it's, it's, like, I've been baffled about this for years, like, trying to remember, like, how did Naruto win this fucking fight? And then I thought, then I reread it, and it's not clear anymore. I don't know how Naruto won this fucking fight. <sighs> I don't know, how you, how do you feel about this? Or did you, did you I mention it and I forgot, because I'm I mean, ranting. it's just, 
I'm not too impressed with like Kakuzu's abilities in particular. Like his character, I'm okay with, um, but his abilities. Like I know I said before, I mean, the stretchy hand stuff is cool, but like it's he doesn't he, he he just attacks. Like I mean, especially like and now I think about it, like he has so many arm like big giant tendrils, and he literally sends all of them at this one Naruto. Like he just does the worst. He's doing the worst thing possible. <laughs> like so, it's like he he just gets like like five seconds of retardation <laughs> that are utterly just, that ends up being his him him. This is why he dies. And it's just like very unsatisfying. Especially when you consider you know, that this guy, like, like especially how when old this guy is, wasn't... how experienced this guy is. Like this is a guy who fought the first Hokage, and he's making such a dumb mistake. <laughs> Why? How did I lose to a bunch uh, so of yeah, rats? A... Oh, I don't. I'm trying to like 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 I even tried like I even came up like fumbled my way into like a slightly better result like it was you still have Kakuzu being stupid but at least Naruto the way Naruto would have won if he made an extra clone would have made some sense like especially if he had done it all the times where he used an extra clone to sort of throw Kakuzu off so um like having that you know plan in mind from the beginning and then you could have like justify Kakuzu's loss with him getting cocky you know, because of him being old and not being able to, like, that would make sense. But the way it, like, literally, like, look, I just fixed the Arc have Naruto use extra clones to sort of, like, throw Kukuzu off, and then use the extra clones to do the Rasen Shuriken with just the four you need, and then, or the three extra you need and you, and... Uh, uh. <laughs> Alright, let's, 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 I, I don't know, I'm done bitching about that. That's probably the worst yeah, moment the, of the arc. The, the, the fight honestly. with Kakuzu is just, it doesn't interest me. Like yeah, look, <laughs> and man, I can see why you disliking this arc, especially back when you. So first, you had the earlier disapp- disappointment with uh, Kakashi. Oh, did he just fucking kill Kakuzu? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> never mind. And then, then the actual result result just being like, and especially so like forced, and especially when you pair say. it up with the the Hidan climax, which is so oh, even if it, so it like technically <laughs> he, it might he, not be the most impressive. Yeah, it's it's not exactly impressive from a t- you know a tactical standpoint, but the the actual like, like banter yeah, the, and what it means for Shikamaru's character and this Chunin killing an Akatsuki member or you know that's pretty fucking cool. And then you just get Naruto and he's like, well, Kakashi's like, oh man, you sur- sure have surpassed me. And then he just bumbles his way through, and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> yeah, um, definitely paralleling these two alongside each other would have been a much better idea. Even then, like, yeah, you could at least say. It- that Naruto had to come last because he's the protagonist, but, uh, I mean... Right, that's very no- very normal, especially in, like, say, One Piece or something. It just doesn't work but, with um, this arc. The emotions aren't there. Not, it's no. It's just, like, for one arc, I think you could get away with letting Shikamaru take the spotlight. Like, because even then, Naruto still gets his moment, he's just not the shining star. But, yeah. Right. It's a, yeah, it's pretty underwhelming considering. <sighs> so moving on, um, or wait, what's oh, did you? I mean, I would say it's on? pretty underwhelming considering we had a decent amount of good things to say about this arc, but then it's up until now, like, pretty much. Like, I mean, I was pretty like basically like this arc is made worse because of Naruto. Like the training arc was kind of like eh, because you get just get the world building that's very clunky because it doesn't feel like it matches Kakuzu's abilities a whole lot. Like. He just has elemental stuff. And even then, it doesn't matter with Naruto. He just comes in with the Rasen Shuriken. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what elements Kakuzu He's had left. three hearts Naruto left. destroys Bam, them all. Gone. One shot. Dead. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like that. Like, yeah, that's it. The elemental stuff only mattered in the Kakuzu fight when um, Kakashi noticed that he's using an earth technique to harden his skin, and he uses lightning to pierce it. That's it. That's that's it. That's all the elemental. Like, like his lightning just works better against Kakuzu's one, this one technique. And he kills one of his hearts because of it, and then they get another one. <sighs> and then, yeah, so Naruto made the arc worse, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Damn it, kid. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> um, so anyway, I mean, he didn't quite kill Kakuzu, because he gets some last words and Kakashi finishes him off. But he's basically dead. Like, Naruto, ki- Naruto basically finished him off. I was so, about um, to make a statement about this arc, that it kind of has a... Like, it has sort of a quality where, like, by the end of the fight, people are... Like, people just look really, um, like, not in good shape. But it's really only Kakashi, because, like, he loses his jacket and whatever. So he's kind of in shambles. Yeah, he, and he, his mask is torn. Like, that's only really with him. Everyone else seems pretty, is pretty fine, yeah. Anyway, so, um, but yeah, they're back in the Leaf Village. Um, Shik- Shikamaru gets a scene with Kurenai, who is still useless and pregnant. 
So she's never going to do anything in the story again, except she's be pregnant. She's still useless um, and pregnant, by the way. That happened. Yeah. Well, especially, like, the, oh, God, the worst part about this is it makes me think about um, that one conversation between Shikamaru and his dad, where he's like, where his dad is like, hey, Shikamaru, you better respect women. They, like, make babies and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are, are we supposed to be, like, thinking, like, um, I don't know, it's just like, this is just, like, furthering this, the whole women being not that much in naruto and especially when you have this character who happens to be se- like it's not like they're really commenting on his sexism but it's like kind of accidentally leaking into the story in a way which is a uh, um a little a little like not great and i'm just like uh kishimoto why um you know we're, we're getting into that unique way in which kishimoto fails his female characters um so, yeah, it's just a little, like, you know, I, I mean, you do get the moment here where we finally get explained what the, you know, the, what, what is the, black, the king that Asuma was talking about of Konoha and the, the kids, the, the children, the next generation. And Kuranai kind of, you know, she has a kid. She has that next generation in her. And of course, you have the whole themes of the arc of the next generation. I mean, it's the theme across all of Naruto, but it really gets driven a bit deeper into this arc. And it's nice, you know. So it's fine. Fine little ending. Except for the whole <laughs> Kuranai getting. Man, it's like, it's just, especially thinking back to the invasion, where you have all the Jody doing stuff, cool stuff. Like, what does Kuranai do? Like, she's, she had a kunai, and she got hit with a genjutsu by Itachi. Like, like, what's her power? <laughs> oh. Like, uh, like, oh yeah, that was the thing, is like, after the last episode, there was a comment who was like, man, Sai is like the most worthless character in Naruto. And I kind of felt personally offended by that. Because I went through that, or like, I was saying, like, man, Sai is actually, like, he's an interesting character. He's got his backstory, and it matches with the themes of the arc, and he's actually gets some character development. It's all, he's all, like, and then this arc, you have Sai and Sakura. I mean, sure, Sai does nothing, but so, neither does Sakura, or Ino, or Kuranai. It's like, how can you say Sai is, like, the most worthless character in Naruto when you have all these fucking women? Who? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little mad. Kishimoto, why? Like, the bloated cast is really starting to become an issue. But, um... I mean, at least this arc does have Shikamaru getting focused, but, um... You know, it's only going to get worse. I think with the... Like, Sai didn't do anything. You know, so... He had some moments early on, which were fun. But I feel like, like, I don't know... I mean, I guess at least we could say that, um... Their involvement in this arc... I mean involvement in air quotes um like unlike with the sasuke retrieval arc where kishimoto brings in all these characters and tries to give them yeah, little moments well, they but do it do just something. slows the pace you know of the arc. i mean yeah the arc gets slowed down but at least they do something you know even if what they do isn't necessarily yeah. the best for the story or even the arc as a whole they, at least they do something you know like it's unlike with like ino and choji like choji gets some attacks off Indo does jack shit. She she mind control. She body swaps with the birds so she can she finds the Akatsuki. Like wow, what a meaningful contribution, you know. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, there were similar problems back with the Kazakaga rescue where Guy and Lee and everyone's just kind of there and they yeah. didn't need to be, but at least they did something. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, so I guess I don't know. Are we done with the discussion, give or take? Or yeah, because I, I mean, I was just kind of weighing around, like I was weighing the options of like, you know, is bringing in these characters where they're not intrusive but they're also not useful worse than, like I don't know, because the way I that mean, it would be some weird of the other them, like... introductions have disrupted the pacing of each arc has been pretty. I mean, like you mentioned the stuff in the Kaze Kaze Kage arc that was like I don't know for me maybe it's just that like the the pacing was really a problem in those two arcs, whereas at least in this arc, because the characters don't really intrude upon the plot too much, like, the pacing is at least okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, I it's kind of like a... It's, um, it's almost a lose-lose, like, it, or maybe, or... Mm. Like, which is worse, though? I don't know. Or And how could it be done better? Like, I don't know, I just... I don't want to feel as though there are extraneous elements to the arc, uh, but at the same time, like... Uh... How do you, like, are, what what is there to Choji's character? Like, I mean, it would have been weird if Choji and Ina weren't there, especially when they are connected to Asuma, but they're, they're uh, I don't know, it's it's a it's a tricky, like, this is, it, it's 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 a problem, but it's not like some of the other ones where it's, like, an easy fix. Like, with the Naruto versus Kakuza fight, uh, Naruto makes an extra clone twice. Like, boom, I, 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 I tweak the fight to make it less, more palatable to me. You know, but this is, like, a such a 
issue it's like not easy to define let alone uh, solve so i don't know i'm sure we'll have more discussed especially during the war when a lot of extra characters get a uh, focus when they probably shouldn't or maybe they should uh we'll we'll find out um i don't know a lot about the war so anyway so we get this last moment with with the little teaser uh sasuke has killed a bunch of guys without a Without, um, well, he didn't, uh, he didn't kill a bunch of guys. He, uh, didn't kill, he beat the fuck out, uh, out of a bunch of guys, though. And, uh, teasing up to the next arc. So, next time, we're gonna get to see some Sasuke. So, any final thoughts in the arc? Where the... do we think this arc stacks up compared to the other ones? Cause, like, with this one, I feel like, as a complete package, it's, like, it's good. But I also feel like it doesn't stand out as much. It's kind of the same issue with the, uh, the, I guess the Tenchi Bridge. Okay. Might have been where I drew this conclusion where, like, it's, it's there. It's, yeah, like, it's, 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 it's all right. It doesn't do it in a lot offensive, but it doesn't stand out, I guess is what, yeah, I, I, I see. Cause, like, before we had gotten to that ending, I was thinking, oh, okay, well, this arc might be one of the better ones in the series, but, that the, the thing with Naruto really, it's again, yeah. where just the ending drops the ball. Right. So, I mean, I, I would agree, though I did like the Tension Bridge arc a bit more, if only for Sai's character. Um, I don't know why I like Sai a whole lot, but I do. It's, I, I mean, hmm. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I guess overall feel like, is it, it's not the worst arc in this series. Like, I mean, it's, um, I guess looking at it now, it's probably in the lower half. I mean, though I, did, oh yeah, this is one thing. So, um, not at the end of the podcast, at the end of the series. So when we finish Naruto, we're going to rate the arcs. Um, so, like, last time we were trying to, like, kind of juggle the arcs against each other, but we, neither of us gave a full list. So, when the last episode, at the last episode, we are going to rate every arc and sort of, like, rank them. And then we're also going to give our top five characters. So, just thought, it, so... Um, yeah, because it's much easier to do that at, exactly. at the end rather than, like, okay, what do we think at this point? What do we think at this point? What do we think at this point, given the context? Right, like, maybe like, something happened later that, oh, I'll, I'll suddenly hate the Tenchi Bridge arc or something like that. Be, be, so it's kind of pointless to rank them all now because it's going it's going to change, you know? So, yeah, we'll do that at the end. I mean, I do have my list of, like, oh, this is my current arc ranking, and, I, you know, I know where I'm going to put the Akatsuki Suppression arc on it. I but, do uh, we'll, not. We'll, we'll, I need to come up with one. <laughs> yeah, and I have a few characters noted down that I might like. But uh, we'll see how that comes out, too. Um, so, uh, yeah. But um, the arc Next, was, you yeah. know, for definitely not quite uh, great. Um, there have been better arcs. Um, for me, it's probably in the lower half, but it's also not the worst. There are Even though there are some annoying parts. Again, Naruto <laughs> ruined the arc. Not, he didn't ruin the arc, but he weakened <laughs> it, unfortunately. Which is kind of a shame when your main character is the one in the way, now I think about it. Um, I mean, he does, yeah. he does tie into it thematically with the surpassing his superiors... But it's a little, little Naruto, what the fuck? Get your shit together, as I say again, <laughs> you know. But um, not that I only had bad things to say about Naruto. As a like, again, he is working hard to master the things that only, like, that only he can use. So, you know, that's cool. Um, Naruto kind of had his uh, Goku moment here where, like, he doesn't really belong in the <laughs> arc, but he shows up at the end and saves the day. Uh, Although I, I will at least say that, like, Goku on Namek was far worse than i think what naruto does here i mean you can debate me on that in the comments i might want to debate you that here because at least the like uh the super like, saiyan i guess at least stuff there you have, cool the, you have the super saiyan the fight was yeah, th like that, the, that's fair yeah the, the stuff the moments between goku and frieza like even if yeah goku's kind of extraneous to the, to the arc like the the actual like moments we can goku and frieza like with uh frieza trying to like he's like there a body and he still tries to like have it like he's he's beaten but he still tries to uh, stab goku in the back even with 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 the energy that goku gave him like that's an interesting moment you know like with but with naruto here it's like he fights kakuzu and wins for bullshit reasons and that's it like it does again go back to the legacy and you know and uh, with kakuzu being an old fogey and naruto being the new guy but that's just kind of, it's not really a super meaningful addition. It's just kind of a neat little it's thematic tie. It's just kind tie. of thrown in there. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know, um, but yeah. So I don't know about Namek specifically, but uh, I, will, I will give the Namek arc at least that. So anyway, um, I think we're about done here. Another yeah, shortish episode, but in that, uh, the, I, I'm worried about the next one because it's going to, well, the next two episodes. The next one, yeah, the next two are going to be interesting because what we're covering next time is basically the the build, the up, build up to the Sasuke versus Tachi, yes and then and on. the build up to the pain arc yes so we kind of get like 
we we'll have the podcast covering like all the build up to two big and then after that we're doing arcs. those big fights so because after that it's gonna be Sasuke versus Itachi and the pain assault so Naruto versus pain and maybe they'll be getting split up like it depends on how we feel because that's the, the the like um if we just covered the Itachi pursuit that would be like tw- that's twenty five chapters that's even less than before and then. The Tale of Jiraiya is a driver. That's like 15 chapters. That's nothing. So it's like, we kind of have to cover those together. And then after that, again, you get the, like, the pain arc is a bit longer. Um, the but thing the, that I think the, about uh, the, like, the Sasuke Itachi thing is that it's one big fight. So how much are we going to have to say? And on we've that? already kind of talked about Itachi a bit. Like, the big reveal is that Itachi did nothing wrong. And, but we've already kind of talked about that. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? But, um, so may I don't know how long that d- discussion is going to be because I feel like this one was a shade faster. Like the the reason this episode was even as long as it was was because we went on these broader points. Like we didn't we 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 stopped talking about the training arc as a whole and then we just started talking this talk this world building and these other concepts that apply to the shonen genre or uh, the demogra- the demographic the action adventure series as a whole. And so as far as the arc itself, like, if, if I cut out all that ex- less um, arc-related stuff, it would be a much shorter episode. Like, uh, this episode could have been, like, an hour and a half long, honestly. And if we could, if we, I mean, we could have tried, but um, we, we failed. Um, but, it, no, it was fine. I, th- I think the episode was better for it. But, um, yeah, these the, I'm curious to see how these next two episodes are going to go. So, um, we'll see, I suppose. I know the next arc I'm going to be... I'm gonna have mixed emotions. I'm really curious we about. Know the, well, who... the next stuff is some of the most interesting things in the manga. I think um, Pain, Itachi, uh, Jiraiya, Naruto, Sasuke. Like, there's a, like this is some big stuff we're coming up to, and it's also, and the, it's also the last arcs before the war. We start getting into the the Five Kage Summit and then the Shinobi War. So that's gonna be. So we're 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 getting there. We're almost halfway done with Naruto, and the last. I feel like the last part is gonna be a bit quicker to cover because the war. I feel like that's going to be a really repetitive because it's just going to be fight after fight after fight. And I don't know. I'm, wor- I'm a bit worried for the war, but we'll see what happens. So anyway, I guess I'm more we're... than a bit worried for the war. <laughs> yeah. You, you've I'm actually, ex- that. you've actually experienced that. So I gotcha. All right. Anyway. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening as usual. Um, and we will see you next time with, uh, I guess our last episode of the year next time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which is interesting that we're going to, the next, uh, the final episode of the year is just build up to the next. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. Yep. So yeah, thanks for, or I said that. Uh, get out of here. <laughs>